Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast. Hello. We are here, we are awake, and we are not in foreign countries, which is something that could not have been said recently. I, you know, I just treat New York as a foreign country. I think that's a fair thing to do. It might as well be. Yeah. One of the best foreign countries. It's pretty damn good foreign country, I've got to say. We, we went to a steakhouse by the name of Uncle Jack's. It nice, a, nice. It was a rather cold evening, to say the least, to the point where people were sheltering in the doorway of Uncle Jack's, but not actually <laughs> coming in because of the biting cold that whirled around the tall buildings of New York City. But the steak was damn good. So that was pretty, pretty cool. I was yes. happy with that. That's the food in New York, man. Blows my mind. It's fantastic. I'd more? like to be the first person on the internet to call you a sellout for promoting Uncle Jack's Steakhouse. Uncle Jack's Steakhouse, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's, oh, it's good, man. It's really good. It's a good steakhouse. Happy with that. I'll be promoting many more things along the rest of the show. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. I mean, ah. you have you have said before that you you are on a mission to find the perfect steakhouse. I've been working on it. Uh, top, so. top of the pile for me, and Jesse's probably going to agree with me since we dragged him along to this, would be Donovan's in San Diego. Yeah. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Fantastic. Our waiter was <laughs> obviously high. It was brilliant. <laughs> Bonus entertainment, oh, right? Ah, oh, beautiful. Right? It was great. Yeah. We, we, we might have been the last people out of there, too. We were there for a long time. We were. Yeah, they also, one of the only places that still serve Moscow Mules in the proper cups. Proper copper What's mugs. That? Moscow Mule, it fantastic cocktail. Blew my mind. I, didn't, I was like, what is that? Yeah. Oh yeah, so I ordered like one and you were like, what, like <laughs> what is this? And It looks like you'd get it in maybe the 18th century. It's fantastic. Ooh. In the 18th It is fantastic century. looking. Uh, it was, right. yeah, it was actually a, a cocktail that was sort of invented during the vodka craze in the US in the 1950s. Not actually Russian in any way, but they called it that anyway. And you serve it Market. in a copper mug. It's the proper way to do it. And it's two parts... Two parts vodka, one part lime juice, and three parts ginger beer. So good. Ah, oh, ginger delicious. beer. I'm yeah. in. Yeah. All the ginger beer. Couldn't find a single place in New York that would serve me one. It's like, oh, we don't have any ginger beer. I'm like, ah. You're... Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My favorite drink in the world is Dark and Stormy's, and I can't get yes. them anywhere because nobody has ginger beer. <laughs> yeah. I think best Dark and Stormy I've ever had was actually in Boston. The There's a Boston the clam place that did a Dark and Stormy that was just brilliant. Yeah, a couple of my friends are from Boston, and they were saying that Dark and Stormies are like a super Boston thing. Yes. So yeah, you can I get them in Boston voice. pretty much anywhere. <laughs> I love you, Boston. Yeah. I can't Bo wait to come back. Pax East. Pax East. Yeah, I uh, can't wait to come back to Boston, absolutely. Return guests to the show, ladies and gentlemen. He has not been here since June. He is back. He is the one and only Smooth McGroove. Welcome to the show. Greetings. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Basically, if you come back, that means we like you, so well, that's, that's an good. endorsement. It's always good. We weren't, like, Everybody desperately Everybody who's searching. only been here once is like, what? Yeah, it's just, I, I just shit over 80% of our guests right there. Like, uh, we did have to so do a little bit back. short notice, because we uh, we all just got back from Strange strange Lands. Uh, Jesse and Dodgy were both in Belgium, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Yes. We were Travelers. in Ghent. Fun. Ghent. That did you try awesome tuna pizza as I instructed? Yes, we did. We did. <laughs> Holy shit, it was he good. He was like, "Do you guys?" Yeah, we were. Told we you. were there. We were playing the game, and he was like, "Do you want pizza? Pizza would be easy." And that both of us were like, "We have to have tuna pizza." We were told, <laughs> "You have to have tuna pizza." So yeah, it was, was good. That experience. It it's was very strong because it's um, tuna. Okay. Imagine tuna on a pizza. Like That's canned exactly tuna, what or was it like it, fancier than that? No, it's it canned tuna. It, it canned felt tuna. like it was canned. Okay. Yeah, so. and it was just—it was just like tuna, but then cooked. So if you've ever cooked, like grilled or microwave tuna. It had that taste to it on pizza, and it wasn't bad. It was less nasty than anchovies, mm. but more fishy than anything else on a pizza. Oh, but the real food highlight of like weird things to eat was probably the Bicky Burger. What? Oh, what is that? Okay, so our, our second day there, uh, we, we were, again, shout out to Sven and Larian. Who, uh, we were there playing their yes. game, and uh, they were like, hey, do you want to get some lunch? We're like, sure. And we had yet to have Belgian fries. And so they were like, well, because you know. Because fries are not from France. They are from Belgium. They're from America. Every person in Belgium reminded America. us. 
Oh, I told them that we took it. I reminded them that that they are the old country and that we have co-opted everything that they had. And so now they serve American fries. And so they only went and got fries. But while he was there, uh, we got a, a Bicky Burger. And a Bicky Burger, according to everyone who's told me, he said at the time, I don't think we knew this. I thought we, it was just a patty of some type of meat. It's a very, it looks like a very strange patty. And it turns out that it's made out of a combination of chicken, beef, and horse. <laughs> We yeah. like, and, then, oh. and then they put like eight sauces on it to, I assume, hide the taste of horse or whatever. Here's the thing. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was a little overwhelming. It was like a bit much with all the mayonnaise and stuff, yeah, but it, it was oh, edible. Oh, was God. Here's some horse mayonnaise. There no. wasn't that much sauce on it, though. It was just like a, there, was a of, there was a little bit of sauce and then fried onions on top. I think our, one of our vines has at least a video of... of of us eating it. I think I got you eating it. And the look in your face is like, yeah, yeah. It's not <laughs> bad. You know, I could eat a horse. I, literally, That's I can, I apparently. Yeah. I found a stop motion video of how to make a Bicky burger. I'm going to show it to you. I don't even, yes. good thing I'm not looking at chat. I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they did it in stop motion. That seems like the least convenient <laughs> way of filming this. But I mean, so far it's going okay. But I skipped forward in the video and found oh god, that's a lot of mayonnaise. Oh, it's it is... not just mayonnaise. Dear God, what is this? It's, it's a like bunch a of different sauces. There's a weird cucumber herb sauce that they put on it. There was a lot. It was. Hmm. It was. There was a lot. I. It blows. I understand a lot about Belgium now. One, <laughs> they eat all these hearty foods because it's so damn cold there. It's and two, there, yeah. And two, because uh, they love horses. I've never seen so many different horse stickers and posters and statues in my entire oh, life. And the and the bicycle sign with the pygmy horse spray painted on it. The pygmy horse riding it. a bike. It was great. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, we, we, had, had, a, we had a good time. We had a great time. And in, in the end, we had a, a great time in Belgium. Well, apparently so, yeah. they love horses so much that they're willing to eat them on a regular basis as part of a they're burger. They're tasty, apparently. I, I you know. Apparently and, so. uh, so we is. what else? What else did we do? We had, we went with fans and uh, they helped Dodger cheat at pool, and then I don't know uh, what oh they are all cheaters for you it and was I perfectly legal. You went to the bathroom and I swept. That's what really happened. <laughs> Here's what happened. <laughs> that did not, and um, it was it was a blast. We had a lot of fun, and then. Uh, we got to play the early, I, I guess, a better uh, alpha version of uh, Divinity. Original Sin. Uh, original yeah. Sin. Yes. And uh, it's come a, it's come a long way since what I played a while back. Yeah, we played the same but, build a while back, didn't we? Yeah, but it's still just as awesome. Like, the concept is still really, really great. We did give them a lot of, like, legit feedback because, we, uh, we unfortunately, there was no map. And in a game where it's open-ended, like, you can do whatever yeah. you want... Map is key, and so we, mm -hmm. they're like, no, no, the map's coming, it's just not ready yet. And so we basically said, like, maybe, maybe they'll put this in the game, wink, wink, that um, instead of having quest-like things on the minimap that say, like, go this way, and go this way, and go this way, that you're rewarded for exploring, and so it's going to say, like, go to this point on the map. And so if you have a map, you'll be able to, like, get there with the actual, like, I'm going to explain this very badly, but maybe Dodger can like, explain it. Like, in the, the game... <laughs> The game already has it where if you explore to a new area, you get experience because they want to encourage you to, like, walk around and find things and, like, e experience the game and the world that they've created, blah, blah, blah. So we were talking about how it might be cool if, like, if you've already explored to an area, then it'll say, like, on your map, oh, go here. But if you haven't been there yet, it'll it'll take a place that you have been and say it's to the east of this place. Sort yeah, of like so stuff. it doesn't tell you exactly where to go. It just like helps you find it or figure it out. And so we, and we dropped you get to a lot of, more. yeah, we dropped a lot of like our wisdom bombs from gaming and we were like, you know, it's great. And I still love the fact, and this is what makes it so great for me. I love the fact of hearing the developers cringe when I enter town. And I actually <laughs> set, I, there's a ship on fire and I'm like, Oh, I'll help. I have an ice spell. I can put it out. And I accidentally pressed the wrong button. 
and ignite everyone around me on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and the entire town is just like, the docks are burning and people are dying. And so everyone else at the dock starts attacking me. And I just, in order to get out of there, I have to keep killing the dock workers. And so the docks are just barren by the time I'm done. And Dodge is like, what did you do? And the developers are like, you killed like six quest givers. <laughs> <laughs> and, but then they were like, good thing is you can get those quests other ways. So I think that's a really cool thing. Like there's multiple, there's one ability you can get where you can talk to animals. And so you can get, you can solve a quest that we were doing. Instead of going around the main store, you can actually just talk to an animal and have him smell garments to see which smells like his master. And yeah, so there's a like, lot of like ways to solve quests. Solve quests, yeah, which is It cool. was really cool. I was like, all right, guys, I see this, but they are a, they're a long way off. That It probably won't be out till, I don't know, mid to end of next year, but it's still pretty great. And it then- was, Like literally the entire time we were playing, Jesse kept killing people that would make them go, no. <laughs> like, there was such a good story attached to that person. Jesse was like, I'm sorry. I thought, ugh. They're, all right. I'm in the forest and I see a giant named deer. And I think to myself, if I kill it, it might have loot. I kill it and they're like, that deer was a quest giver. How do I know that a deer was a quest giver? How do you, can you tell good NPCs from bad in this game? Like no, green and no, red? No. Oh. No, nope. can't okay. tell at all. Oh, like, Lar Larian hates like binary morality in a big way. All, all of their games really don't like have good or bad sliders. It's just like you okay. take you do what you do, and the game adapts to that to some degree. There's no right answer. Okay. Like, like there, there's a, there's a, uh, we stumbled upon a giant mechanized robot guy that was ridden by a skeleton, and these soldiers were like, we have to, we have to know, we have to fight this guy, and, and all of our friends, uh, like the Fantastic Five, or whatever they were called, the Fabulous Five, like they didn't show up, and so we had to go help this guy, and it was hilarious because we got destroyed. And so we... we we, we might have cheated to kill him. And when he died, people came over and were like, well, why didn't you just use the remote control that controlled him? We're like, we didn't even, we didn't even know that existed. Yeah. And they're like, oh no, it was back in a shop you missed and you could have bought it for like two silver. We were like, son and of a- And then you could literally just go in and be like, boop, and turn it off instead of like having this extremely long boss fight. We were like, but like, it's but cool it's that there are those options. Yeah, it was fun. And the biggest thing I learned, which blew my mind, is they have a wall there that is dedicated to all the Dragon Commander path options for the story. I was unaware there were so many. I like took a photo and was like, can I, can I keep this? And I'm like, we'd rather you didn't. <laughs> there, there were literally a wall of things. I was like, I haven't done any of these. So now I got to go back. You can, you can turn your skeleton bride into a robot. I want that. I wanted to be a robot. I didn't even know that was possible. It wasn't enough to just have her turn into a naked blonde woman. No. You need, you need the robot version now. <laughs> yes. Yes, I need, look, I need to do that. For in here. Fair enough. Right Fair in enough. here. Yeah. So we had a blast and it was fun. And uh, I, I hear that uh, you might have had some fun this past week, TB. What was that like? Indeed, but I'd like to first give our guest who has been sitting mostly silent for the last 16 minutes a chance to tell us what he's been up to this week, and then we can talk about the adventures in New York. So, Mr. Smooth McGroove, what have you been playing this week? What's been going on? Well, uh, I procured a copy of A Link Between Worlds, first and ah, foremost. Ah, yes. Yeah, that, um, that's, it was surprisingly good. Uh, it, the controls were the, were the most surprising thing. Because I'm a huge Link to the Past fan. It was the first Zelda game that I ever actually beat. And so, of course, the Link Between Worlds was like, hmm, let's see. hope it's good, hope it's good. It's probably going to be good. You know, we'll see. So, loaded it up, and, you know, the, the circle pad just feels amazing running through the game. Uh, swinging your sword feels even better than it did in uh, the Super Nintendo, uh, you know, Link to the Past. Um, the only thing that, that kind of got me was the whole items, the rental system. You know, um, rental have, have system. Any, yeah, have you, yes. any of you guys played it yet? I haven't played yeah. it yet. Okay. Yeah, the rental system, they basically just like, you know, without spoiling too much, they just like, there's a point in the game pretty early on where you're just able to like rent pretty much every major item uh, that was in the original Link to the Past. Just rent them. And um, it's an interesting mechanic and uh, it took a little bit to get used to. At first it kind of felt like cheating, uh, but there is, um, there's kind of a, it's a double-edged sword because if you rent every single item, you know, you spend all your rupees 
And if you die with rented items, mm -hmm. you have to rent them again. So right. it's, uh, anyways, I don't know. It, it's, a, it's cool to be in that world that, you know, like I was like eight years old playing Link to the Past and explored the whole world. And, you know, now I'm back in that world 100 years in the future. And it's not exactly the same. There are some surprises that they put in there as far as new paths that weren't there. Um, kind of what you'd expect in a populated area in our world, like a hundred years later, uh, where you know you recognize what's going on and you recognize landmarks, but a lot of things have changed. So, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I've also been playing a lot of Fire Emblem Awakening. That kind of got put on hold. That game is so good. I mean, Fire Emblem is a pain in the ass. It's <laughs> a, a, a fantastic pain in, pain the in the ass. Yes, yes, perfectly put. It is one of those where you'll you think you're doing well and you're in this battle and then you make one wrong decision. You just go a little bit too offensive and then one of your guys dies and you're just like, no. But it's so rewarding when you finally, you know, do it right. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, it really is. That there are some times in that game where I would say they almost do things designed to dick you over in an unfair way. If you don't know it's coming. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a battle fairly early on in the game where a bunch of, I think it's like flying knights spawn behind you. Like, there's some vague reference to, references to sort of being followed in the story leading up to that, but it doesn't like specifically tell you. And then they come in and they just murder all your weak guys immediately before you can do anything about it. So you've mm -hmm. got to be completely prepared for that. So I had to do that, redo that battle a couple of times. It's, yeah, it can be a bit of a dick, but it's so satisfying to get it right. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic, uh, there's almost nothing about that game that I just really don't like. And uh, I've never beaten any of the older Fire Emblems. I know a lot of them weren't even released in the U.S. or several of them weren't. So I, I played them uh, just like at friends' houses or, or rented and things like that. But, you know, <sighs> I was too young to appreciate the, the complexity. And it, was, it wasn't until Final Fantasy Tactics that I really kind of started to appreciate games like that where I'm like, okay, so, you know, you make these decisions and, ooh, okay, so this is rewarding and it's really hard. So. Yeah. But yeah, Awakening is awesome, and I haven't beaten it yet, um, but I'm looking forward to it. I still recommend never it. played a Fire Emblem game. You should. Pick I it didn't up. before you this. Pick this one up. Yeah, this this is a perfect intro to it. It really is. Yeah. It's like one of the best. It has, of course, the best graphical fidelity. It. I mean, it looks amazing on the 3DS. It really does. And the storyline's fantastic. You don't really need to know anything about Fire Emblem to play it. Although a lot of the bonus DLC maps that you can use to get extra characters from the other series and earn some experience and stuff like that. All that storyline stuff, you don't really know what's going on because you haven't played those. But that, that, all that stuff's also pretty optional. So it's, it's just a really satisfying SRPG, you know, strategic RPG. And it's brought, brought bang up to date. It's got really good mechanics. I like it a lot. If you want to get a game very similar uh, in spirit, and uh, you can probably emulate it at this point. It's really old. But um, Ogre Battles? Yeah. And I, there's another name for it. I just Tactics remember what Ogre. The, Tactics Ogre. There you go. That yeah. is a fantastically fun game where there's like the tarot card aspect of it and uh, building armies and using them on a battlefield in tactic style. It's really, really good. It's an old SNES game. Yeah. Pretty there's fantastic. A, there's a PSP version that's one of the best in the series, mm -hmm. so that means you can play it on Vita. It's called Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together, which is the stupidest mm -hmm. name ever, but it's a really, really good game. That's it. Yeah. That genre is pretty awesome, and lately it's been getting really popular with Disgaea because that's been gaining a lot of momentum, but Disgaea is actually one of the SRPGs that I dislike the most because it is so fucking grindy. And it really gets on my nerves. Plus, you get too many characters at once. I always hate that. I, you should always start off with a very small number of characters. And those characters should, hopefully, have some degree of character development to them in terms of the way the story works. This guy right. has barely any of that. And be, like, at the start of this guy, it's like, create like six or seven characters of all these different classes immediately that have no individual like character to them. It's... I don't know, there's parts of Disgaea I really like, but the rest of it really bothers me. And Fire Emblem is the antithesis of that. It really, it makes you care about the individual characters. And of course, permanently killing them off really helps in that respect. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's what I really love is like, you, you get these, you know, you get a relatively small amount of characters off the bat. And you, they kind of have their surface personalities. And as you go through the game, they develop. And yeah. they don't just develop just because you're going through the game. They develop based on your actions. 
They develop based on like, you know, who you're pairing them up in battle with. And they develop these relationships and stuff. And it's just like, it's, it was cool. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I can, I can really see how, you know, a lot of um, people who don't like, you know, the s strategy games, you know, chess, kind of like chess, you know, board moving around. But like, uh, I, I know some people who don't like those games at all who like Fire Emblem because of that relationship aspect, the character development and how, you know, you kind of have control over that and how it moves throughout the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think this, the Disgaea style of games is much better for those who really enjoy stats progression. Like, you can, if you love statistics, if you love numbers, and just being able to completely micromanage the development of every single character, then that's a perfect game for you. It's also got a really great sense of humor. You know, I'll, I'll happily admit that I really enjoy Disgaea's sense of humor, but there's just aspects of the battles that I really dislike and aspects of the character progression, especially the bloody item world nonsense in the first game. It's like, every item has, like, an infinite dungeon inside it, and you need to do that dungeon to level that item up, and it's the same randomly generated bullshit over and over again, and you have to move, like, 24 characters around. It takes forever. And, you know, I how like... many hours do you put into this game? Oh, just hundreds, hundreds, thousands really? Okay. to really get the most out of this guy. <laughs> That, that, that's why Fire Emblem, I think, is really good. You can avoid the side battles, but when you do them, they're also really good, and they've got a story aspect to them. And uh, they don't take too long. They're not randomly generated. It's just handcrafted. So, you know, they're not going to drag on for hours just because there was some bullshit in the random number generator thing that made the level just absolutely awful in every way. So, yeah, you know, I, I love Fire Emblem. I think you know it's a really good intro to the SRPG genre, and I, I would certainly highly recommend it to anyone that has a 3DS. What else have you been playing? Uh, I actually, for the past month, and I just kind of stopped. Uh, I loaded up Pandaria for the first time. Oh my! I, All right. I was just I, I caved and I was curious. I played every expansion, uh, you know, since Classic, and you know, I, I realized that it was the Siege of Orgrimmar came out, and they had the 10 day trial. And I was like, let's do this. So um, it was it was interesting. It, it was it was enjoyable, but I compared it to being given buckets of candy, tasty candy, just so much of it, more than I've ever gotten in a in a, in a World of Warcraft expansion. And you eat it all, and it's so good. But then you're just like, "Where's my nourishment? You know, like where's the real food?" Uh, and I was left kind of just like after a week or two. You know, once I hit ninety, I was just like. I don't, I don't want to play this anymore, you know? I've, and I've never actually had that feeling with with, uh, with World of Warcraft. I always mm -hmm. had, you know, had goal-oriented character progression and all that stuff, and I felt like I wanted to, you know, do the top DPS in, in my guild or whatever, but I just didn't feel that need. So once I got all that tasty free epics, I just went and <laughs> solo Molten Core and Blackwing Lair and Tempest Keep and SSC and all these other nostalgic dungeons, and that was a lot of fun. But, of course, that gets old after a few weeks. And um, I don't know. I I think it was well done. I just think they're they're catering more and more to people who don't play the game very much. Yeah, they don't want to put the work in. Exactly. I, you know, this is when I finally left in Cataclysm. This was I I'd been saying it for years that that was the wrong way to do things, and I finally just got to the point of saying, "Yep, I yeah, I don't think this game is for me anymore." Uh, Jesse, you played a decent amount of Pandaria, didn't you? Yeah, I I would agree. I I don't I don't know that I, I, I agree that I left because it was casual. I left because the that little like bit two ninety where you experienced the new places in Pandaria and you mm -hmm. experienced all, it was gorgeous, it was beautiful. The story was really great. You followed all of the um, story of the like Pandaren Emperor and stuff. Like it was it was a great little plot. And all the stuff flowed together wonderfully. The problem is when you hit 90, it is like six reps to grind, I mm -hmm. think. And the dungeons are just like when you do a raid, you feel like you're doing the same raids you've done before. Even if it's the same, um, like, like even if they're different monsters, or, or they look and feel the same overall. There's, there's one really great example where the boss fight is a mirror image of Cthulhu with the eye beam and stuff, where you have okay. to just mm -hmm. yeah. and it's like, all right, I've no, I've done all of this. Like, you, they come up with gimmicks now for every boss fight that just needs to be more and more gimmicky, and so it, it's it's just raid night after raid night, and it's like I can't I can't do that anymore. Like, it really it's really starting to get boring, and 
I don't know. I, I it's it's the story's great. Everything for 290 was fantastic, but again, once I hit 90, it was like, well, I'm doing wow the same while I've done for seven years, and nothing has changed right now. It's the exact same thing. If I want to have fun, I have to grind, 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 and spend hours playing. Mm -hmm. And then, even though I laughed at people who always said, yeah, and then the next expansion comes out and everything you do is for nothing, and I was like, but I had fun, right? Now I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, the next expansion is going to come out and everything I'm doing is for nothing. <laughs> like, that's, that's my thing, man. It's like, you know, playing the classic was great. It was an adventure. No one knew what was going on, and you're experiencing all this content. Then Birdie Crusade came out, and it was like, oh, well, all my old gear, you know, it doesn't matter what gear you have, it doesn't matter if you rated. You know, 20 hours a week. Oh, yeah. Like, by 61, you'd wiped all of your stuff out. Yeah. If you were lucky, you had full tier 3, and by, you know, it took to 67, you know. But even then, it's just like, you know, so you, so you had a few more days to enjoy your gear. I mean, and this happened so many times. And, you know, from the most ridiculous thing about Pandaria was, I, and I know this is because I joined at the last patch of the expansion, but... You know, I wasn't even 90, and I had someone uh, fly me on the back of their mount to Timeless Isle, and we just started doing these world bosses, which is like Guild Wars style, where you just tag it once, you can die, and you get full loot off of it. Well. And, you know, within like four, four or five hours, I had like 10 epic items that were level 90 that were better than the, the entry-level raid gear, all for free, just because I would tag bosses. And then when I hit 90... You open up these chests that are just sparkling on the ground, like just really obvious. And you know, sometimes two epics will pop out that'll replace everything that you can possibly get, unless you're rating, you know, tier two or above gear in Pandaria. And you know, I was just laughing the whole time because I'm like, okay, well, this is great. This is going to make it easy for me to solo all the old nostalgic content that I want. <laughs> yeah. But besides that, it was just like, man, this isn't really conducive for me playing this very long. You know, yeah. that's that's the feeling well, I got. There's a lot of people saying that it, you, you can you don't have to grind reps and you don't have to build the farm and you don't have to do that stuff and you can do whatever you want but you can't do anything you want if you don't do those like that limits the amount of stuff you can do if you don't do those things and those unlock other things for you to do so by not doing them you can sure not do them but you're missing out on content in the game and that to me that's a problem because i'm like i want to experience everything there is to experience i just don't want to have to sit there and continually do the same eight quests over and over and over and over again because it's annoying uh, as balls people and it's a job it becomes a job hell. yeah i mean uh, daily questing was one of the worst things they ever added to world of warcraft it really Kill was it, for me. it really i mean but ultimately it comes down to this right it's the same game we've been playing for like eight or nine years it's kind of understandable that we eventually got bored <laughs> of it and yeah. it's not it, i'm not going to blame blizzard for every single last thing i still think that blizzard really did the wrong thing when they started to make raids easier when they started to make raids like super accessible and not requiring certain classes and organization because once you do that you have to end up making the boss fight so gimmicky to compensate for it that you end up just stacking gimmick upon gimmick upon gimmick until everything gets ridiculous and there's like there's no way to do a full reset on that yeah you can't take it back to where it was in the first place. And that's a real shame. And the feeling of achievement definitely disappeared. I remember getting my first epic in Molten Core a long, long time ago. I think it was an Arcanist belt. I got an mm. Arcanist belt, and it was the best day ever for me. It was so, good, so cool. And you know, back when epics were epic, and men were men, and sheep were sheep, and so on and so forth. But and paladins were alliance. Yes, they were. <laughs> Never indeed. forget. And shamans were horde. That was the way it was. Never yep. forget. And when Pally Gear dropped in Molten Core for the horde, so we instantly de eat it. It's like the, worst. the absolute best <laughs> source least, of there were crystals. There defined lines, and we didn't have pretty. Look, no one in the horde could claim to be a pretty race. No one. And yep. It felt good that way. Yep. Oh, Closest really you got good. was a female troll, and that wasn't close enough, but... Mm -mm. Nope. Ah, female trolls are hot. They had halitosis. Ah, <laughs> yeah, man, that bag is full. <laughs> but I think, I think the problem with WoW, I think, extends to all, at least for me, to all major MMOs right now. Uh, every one that I've played, be it Rift, or I'm trying to think of all the ones I've played since I quit WoW. Anything that has hotkeys in it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, even everything up to Final Fantasy XIV, like, I just, there's a certain point where I play it, I'm like, oh, this is all new, this is shiny, and then it hits me like, 
this is reskinned wow thing. yeah it feels and even if people are like no this is different and this is different and this is different and there's like seven or eight things that are different at its base core it still it still feels like the mmo we've played that i've played since you know mmo switched to the wow model and i silently wait for a new one to come along and I, I have lots of hope for Elder Scrolls, but it continually seems to be more and more like a WoW model. I don't really know what there is out there that would replace it. And as of right now, mm. MMOs just aren't on my radar because they're just very meh. Yeah. A lot of people are out there waiting for the next big adventure. You know, like the, some someone to come up with a model of a game that's just like, oh, this is exciting and new. And, you know, millions of people will dive into it. EverQuest I, Next, right. I think, is what a lot of people are waiting for. Because, oh, God, I yeah. can't wait. That looks they're, interesting. Yeah, they're seeing the sandbox. At, how dare you speak, Dodger? Go back to sitting there petting your cat. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway, the, <laughs> find that cat. Where is it? Go pet it. I don't know. It stopped trying to eat my food, and now I'm confused. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people are saying Wildstar, but having played that at no, PAX, it's, it's wow. It it's feels wow. like wow. It's a good wow. Don't get me wrong. It's a, You know, what I played of it, it's... It is a good World of Warcraft. It does have some stuff in there, like the crafting and the house building and the fact that they, they put a nice little spin on each of the four sort of paths that you can take. So you, put, you pick a path depending on what your kind of player style is. And if you like exploring, there's an explorer path which rewards you for finding new areas and secret areas. Then there's a warrior path which gives you a lot of kind of wave-based survival quests and things like that. But it is still World of Warcraft, you know? Right. I was speaking it to a number of cartoony feel. Yes, it really, really does. Yeah. I mean, it still looks great. Don't get me wrong. The art style, I think, is fantastic. But you look at it and you break it down. And I was speaking to a number of Blizzard guys over the past few weeks, and every one of them, when we got into a conversation about WoW, has said kind of the same thing. It's that no one is going to beat us at our own game. They've got to innovate the genre. Like, and I and I said to them, it's like actually something I said to Mike Morhaime when I was talking to him. It's like. You guys created the very apex of what this particular subset of the genre is, and it will never be topped, yeah? Because eventually WoW's gonna die, and with it, hotkey MMOs will die, and we'll probably never see their like again, and WoW will always have been the, the high point of that. It will always have been the most successful, the most accessible. And we will move MMOs into a different space because we can. MMO is a concept, yeah? MMO mm -hmm. is not a genre. You can yeah. tag MMO onto any genre in theory if you innovate it properly. And the de definition of MMORPG over the past seven or eight years has basically been WoW or EVE for the most part. You know, EVE does, does it differently enough to be successful. And everything mm -hmm. else is just kind of riding the coattails of WoW and trying to even be a fraction of the success of it. And even Elder Scrolls Online, to, to you know, you might look at it, it's like, oh, but the first person, it's like, the first person's pretty much a, a gimmick, in my opinion. You know, what I played of it, it, it's, it doesn't no, feel anywhere near as good as the real games. It, it's, it's a thing that you can play if you want to play by yourself. You're right, it's a, it's a gimmick that if you're trying to do an epic battle, you'll just be slaughtered. Like, there's no way you can go into to Cyrodiil and expect to win any PvP in first person. No. I will just... I mean, it's, and it's most insane. of your skills are on hotkeys anyway, so all you're actually doing is limiting your own field of view by going into first person. Yeah, it's and just there to pander to people, and it, it, it's at first I was really excited, but ha you know, having not played it, I can say that it's you know I don't see how I would ever use it. I mean, yeah. I, I guess it takes away from the point of. I don't know why. If you want to play a single-player campaign, go for mm. it. You can do it just like you did with Star Wars. Yeah. A few people are pointing out uh, Star Trek Online. I, I gotta say, actually, like, I'm really tempted to go back to that game. Even when it first came out and it had, like, a million and one problems, it still did enough different where I was thinking, well, huh. They actually gave this a try. Like, space battles in that game are still cool. St PvP is still a lot of fun. I remember going in my clearing out and getting my base level shitty bird of prey and cloaking and sneaking up behind the Federation ship. It's like, all the fucking torpedoes as I just uncloak. And that was so fun. But they had like problems with the ground combat was terrible. It's a lot better now because they made it a little bit more like a third person shooter instead of being this terrible hotkey based like awful thing, which was like, wow, but awful. Uh, it's, but, like, that game's also, like, added layers upon layers of complexity to the point where I have no idea what's fucking going on in it anymore. It's this, it's just really confusing to me. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to play 
a different kind of MMO, you know? I actually am reinstalling uh, DC Universe Online right now. Because that was kind of oh, fun. Yeah? It was kind of fun. I liked it. What's different about it? Well, it's mostly the combat. Like, the combat is a lot better, and the movement and the way that you explore the city as well. Because you have a movement superpower, basically, from the get-go, you want to run up the walls of the biggest fucking skyscraper in Gotham City and stand there looking heroic? You can. Or villainous. Or villainous. <laughs> how, how, how does one look villainous? I'm trying to uh, think like, ask, like this. Ask, ah, yes. Ask, no, my character, the Grin Reaper, friend ah. of the Joker. <laughs> Dark Halibut. Is, was mine. He was wonderful. He was on a mission guy. to. He, he was a robot. He was a. He was a protocol droid essentially that went a little insane, and his mission was to civilize the population by assuring that no one would be rude to anyone ever again, and his oh, okay. solution to that was to kill them with fire. So <laughs> he he was a he was a robot in a top hat with fire powers and a big quarter staff that he beat people to death with. It was so cool. I was a guy in a, with a Joker mask and a shotgun. So. Yeah. That's what that was. Yeah, it was... I don't know. It, it had its moments. I gotta admit, it had more action-y combat. The questing was pretty good. They, like, they put a lot of voice acting into the questing, like, with, obviously, Mark Hamill's the Joker. So you pick the Joker oh, yeah. as your mentor, you get to do, like, tons of really cool Joker quests and things like that. But it, it definitely had its problems, but I've heard it's been developed a lot better lately, although you probably don't want to play it unless you take a subscription. It's, like, it's... Their free-to-play model's a bit dodgy, for what I've been told. So, but if you subscribe for fifteen dollars a month, then that's basically like you get all the content. So, I'm fine with that. Like, I'm kind of sick of free to play MMOs. It's getting on my nerves. Yeah, that model doesn't work for me at all. No, it's yeah. We'll we'll actually get onto microtransactions okay and shit. And uh, what was the last free to play MMO you played, Dodger? Path of Exile. That's not a yeah. See. Eh. They have You're talking about the fairest people in the world there. That doesn't count yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the most recent one I've played. Yeah. They have, they have the model that works. I think I they think really that's are. as close to perfect as you get where you know you don't there's no pay to win. There's pay to be pretty. <laughs> you know, that's it. I, yeah. yeah, I literally don't even notice the microtransactions ever. No. Like they they they're not shoved in your face at all. <laughs> yeah, they really aren't. That's that is a game not that even is with super bags fair. or anything? Hmm? That's the one that gets you when MMOs are like, oh, yeah, no, we have very few microtransactions. But if you want bag space, uh, you have to pay. Yeah. Like, they don't do that. They don't have bag payments where you have to. That's uh, the only thing that affects, well, affects gameplay. Uh, you wouldn't, you have I haven't noticed that, point. actually. Yeah, see, I, I didn't even realize that I could, like, expand. I've, one day I you will need it. <laughs> now, see, I was watching some streamers, you know, like Kriparian, and when, you know, he's been playing it, and my buddy Alkaiser, like, those guys need that. They instantly boom, 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 boom. You know, they drop the, you know, whatever, 20 bucks and buy all the bags. And, you know, because those guys are sitting there farming eight to 10 hours a day. And, you know, they've got to have all their tabs and, you know, they buy the special colored ones where you can color code it. But uh, besides that, every other microtransaction is just like pretty spells and pretty hats and stuff. So. A little kiwi bird. You can get one of yeah. those. I, yeah. I think my account has bronze kiwi on it. But. Yep. Yeah, get this just a nice little transition actually, Dodger, because you have been playing Path of Exile, so you just put yeah. up a video. I want to hear like how you've been doing with this game so far. What do you think? Horribly. She's uh, bad at it. Just the worst. <laughs> just I, horrible. I've never seen I anyone mean, so I'm, bad. I'm still not great at it, I'll be honest. Uh, I actually I made the mistake of somebody was like, Oh, are, did you see that Reddit post about your video? And I was like, I don't want to see that Reddit post. No. But I looked at it anyway. No. <laughs> and it was just everybody being like, this girl is an idiot. Like, <laughs> what? And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really bad at these games. But, like, despite being really bad at it, I think it's really, really fun. And I have improved. All of you who are like, you didn't improve all that much. Uh, I know how to actually use spells now, thanks. <laughs> so... Um, no, I think that that game's great. I guess somebody who's bad at them, I think that it's great. So I'm sure that somebody who is good at them would get a lot more out of it yeah. than I am. It's you like, know? how? It's like, oh, no, you are enjoying it on a, a very sort of baseline level where you don't really understand a lot of the systems, but you're still having fun anyway. Isn't that a fucking, like, celebration of what the game is, that you can actually that's, like it? That's yes. the thing. Yeah, and, like, I, um, in my most recent video, too, I was, like, I, I'm still refusing to look up builds. Like, I'm just not going to look up a you build. I'm going to just play the game. You don't need character. And anyone that tells you otherwise is a fucking grognard. Yeah, They're a every... fucking grognard. Oh. 
Yeah, everybody was saying, you know, that like pretty much across the board, your first character, you probably won't be able to beat the game. You'll get to a point where you're like, oh man, I should have put more stats into health or I should have done this, I should have done that like early on, but that's fine. Like I don't, you know, I'm just going to play the game and enjoy it yeah. and do what, do what feels right. And um, yeah, and I totally agree. Like I don't, I don't put games up on my channel assuming that I am the best player of that game. Far oh, from it. In pretty much every, <laughs> no matter what the game is, I know that I'm not fantastic at it, right? But I think that that makes it all the more, if I'm really enjoying it, then you know that if you are good at the game, you're probably going to get more out of it and enjoy it even more than I am. So. Yeah. I, I've never, and this is something that's like plagued my channel as well, uh, whenever the hardcore grognard fanboys of whatever game they've been playing since like early closed alpha for 20 hours a day will look at my video and it's like, how could he have not missed this? Like, I've literally played for like three hours or whatever and they've played for a thousand. Right. And it's like, I can't look, believe how unprofessional that you didn't research before playing this game. Which is always this hilarious. This is your job. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you made this your job for like six fucking months and I have to play like 20 games a week. <laughs> You know, but it they should be celebrating the fact that some that game can actually be enjoyed by people that don't necessarily know what they're fucking doing. Because I what it really gets me is that these people seem to want to prove to somebody in the world that like the best at this game that literally no one gives a fuck about. Whereas they should be really happy about the success of the game that they supposedly like, because all these people are coming in you know, thanks to our videos or whatever, and enjoying it just on a more casual basis. Like, do you want your game to literally only have 200 people? Because that's the way you do it. Hardcore that, people. Yeah, that's how you drive people away. Get out. It's like, you have a hardcore ladder to play <laughs> on. You want, And if people don't want to play on that ladder, that's entirely their fucking right. Mm. So, I, I don't know, it's... I, I see those kind of communities, and uh, Reddit's particularly bad for it. it. It depends on the game. Some communities are really welcoming. Yeah. And some sure. are just fucking grognards in the worst possible way. Like, they, if I mean, you... I mean, whatever, like, whatever sort of fandom you're in, whether it's, like, a game or a TV show or anything, there are going to be some communities that are just so sweet and some communities that are like, if you don't know everything about this, you don't care enough. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Oh, you don't damn. belong like, here. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's rough, but, like... I I absolutely recommend Path of Exile. I think that it's a fantastic game so far. It really is. You know, it is. It has the Diablo 2 aesthetic brought bang up to date. It has a dev team that gives a shit. It has a load of depth. It is very challenging, but it's also something you can pick up relatively easily. Mm -hmm. And it has the fairest free-to-play model in the industry right now, up to and including Dota 2. You know, it's on the level of that. And Dota 2 is like, we don't give a shit because we're literally drowning in cash. So we don't have to ask for money for anything. So, you know, I mean, this is for the business Valve, model I call... Maybe you've heard of us. Yeah. It's like, this is the business model that I described and still believe to this day as the most unfair, horrible business model to other games that exists. Like, we are driving you out of the industry with sheer weight of money. Um, yeah, yep. so it's on that level, but they're a small, I believe from New Zealand, yeah. Grinding Gears. They're from New Zealand, yeah. 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 17 people, small I believe, team. whenever I started playing the game, wow. were, that's, that's all that was in the company. And yeah. they're tiny, they didn't have any money, they, they put their own money into this game, and they all went into debt because of this game, because they believed in their system. Yeah. And they, they had, did. in my opinion, a revolutionary currency system in the game, there's no gold. Yeah, and I yeah, love that. Trading? Yeah. I love that so much. And uh, they actually, literally stopped gold farming overnight with that. Yes. You know? Yeah, it was fantastic. Genius. And I've had uh, quite a few people tell me about how there's also a really complex system where you can combine certain things to give people and then get rare items in return. And I was mm. like, what? That's brilliant. Because you've already got that trade system in place. And then just adding another level to it of like, but if you give me this, this, and this, you'll wind up with something that might help you out even more and i was like what brilliant it's brilliant yeah. the item progression is almost infinite in that game and it's very risky and scary but because of that it's got that it's got that element i'm not sure if any of you guys have played like the old korean mmos you know like pre-wow or not. whatever <laughs> yeah i mean like a lot of those games are just infinite item progression forever and you can like destroy an item that's like the most perfect item if you just take a risk and it doesn't pay off and path of exile has that element but it's not i don't think it's near as bad 
I think it's a, it's a better implementation and it's a lot more friendly for people probably like you and I who, who aren't the most hardcore like world first let's do this type gamers yeah yeah so but those type of gamers play like my friends that play that game the, you know especially my uh, my best friend that plays this game he is world class like I think right now uh, he doesn't he's not playing anymore but he was top three in the world on release mm. the path of exile and I was scared to play with him because he would make <laughs> fun of me and he would be like why yeah, are you doing yeah. that that that's stupid you know and, and I understand you know I don't take it personally because the way he plays games is to win to be better than everyone yeah. and he just yeah. has that yeah me people, I'm just like oh this is a cool idea I wonder this what this is really does. fun yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and you people know he's play like, games for different reasons and it's yeah, totally exactly. okay as long as that doesn't like negatively impact anyone else. I've said this time and again. Like, if you want to play like shit in a one v one game, or you just want to not take it seriously, that is entirely your right, and more power to you for it. But if you want to do it when you're on a team with four other people, that's when shit doesn't get okay. You know, you you mm -hmm. can't really do that. But you want to play Path of Exile solo with a suboptimal build, not look up builds, and just fuck around. Isn't it great that the game actually supports that? Like, it supports yeah. gaming at so many different levels and everyone's having fun. This is fantastic. We should be fucking celebrating that instead of condemning it on a fucking subreddit. Mm -hmm. So what I'm basically saying is, fuck you if you're condemning it on a fucking subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I don't pay attention to Path of Exile on Reddit, so... I, I haven't read the Path of Exile, so, but actually, I did a long time ago when it was a very small community because I did some... I did a couple of really early videos that got really popular about like the end game map system because the dev gave me basically first look at that and first look at the the shadow class or something like that. Mm. And oh, yeah. I did those and like everyone was really positive about that. But then of course the community was tiny at that point. And now it's blown up because the game's out. And then the, the inevitable elitism comes along with it. It was kind of the same with the Hearthstone subreddit as well. And it's not just Reddit. I mean, it's like forums in general turn into this oh, yeah. as, as games grow. And more often than not, a, a, a game-specific subreddit will turn into that. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, I just... I hope people understand that not everyone believes that skill at a particular game is actually worthwhile in any respect. <laughs> yeah, because unless you are earning money playing oh. that game and you're earning money because you're good at it, there is... your skill is literally worthless. You know, it's cool. Celebrate, wow. celebrate your own skill. Yeah, if you, if you want to be <laughs> if you want to be the best for your own self fulfillment, I could not respect that attitude more. That's the most respectable attitude ever. If you want to be good to brag and talk down to other people, then fuck off. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you know? And I will mock Total your life sense. choices if you do that. <laughs> I will fuck off. Mock yep. you. Yep. But if you want to be a pro gamer podcast. to say, I don't know, win the GSTL, then more power to you. But absolutely, is, you should do something like that. that. What do you mean, TV? Mm, what what do I mean by that? What are you mm. talking about? Why don't you tell us about your time? Yes. Weekend, what, you, what did you do? If, what you huh? Doing? So I what? stayed up for about 58 hours. <laughs> Jesus. I was going to say this wasn't deliberate, but I was, I was a little worried. So while I was... I, I went to Red Bull Battlegrounds New York to do casting there, which was an amazing tournament. I'd like to thank, obviously, everyone that came along, everyone that said hi, including the drunk people at the after party that wouldn't stop hugging me. You were great, too, and I didn't catch any diseases from you, which is always nice. But during this time, as I went up there, our team, Axia Mesa, reached the grand finals of the Global StarCraft Team League, which is one of the two biggest team oriented the StarCraft leagues in the world. For those of you who don't know, StarCraft is a 1v1 game, right? So usually leagues are individual. So it's like one guy wins the world championship. But there's another format called the Team League where you enter an entire team and you play either a best of seven or like a best of nine with kind of a winner stays on format. So, you know, it's like passing a controller around with a fighting game with your friends, right? So the good guy often stays on for multiple uh, games. But once you reach like when once you win four maps you basically won the series so you're playing your best player at a certain point but if your best player goes out he can't come back yeah right. so he can't come back in that series so you'd say oh well front load your best player because you might win all of them y yeah you might but so the other guys who've been preparing for you for like two weeks may have also figured this guy out and figured out how to beat him and snipe him and then suddenly things get really really interesting so our team axiom Acer reached the grand finals we, it was a best of three, sort of three-night event. We lost the first series. 
which was like really tough for us. I was watching that because I couldn't sleep. I was too nervous. And it was like soul crushing to watch. Aww. I was so sad. And then I, 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 I couldn't, I still couldn't sleep. And then the second night, the nerves, there were so many nerves, I couldn't sleep at all. So I, well, fuck it. I haven't slept in like 50 hours. We're going to watch this shit. And it comes down to the wire. Like the last fucking game. Oh I'm like, oh god! I'm so tired at this point. I'm like, I'm about to just go vomit. I just, I'm feeling so sick. And we won. We fucking won. So I'm, yeah, I'm really happy with the guys. They did so well. And since we're on the podcast right now, I'd like to give a special thank you to all the subscribers because basically the subscriptions for the past six months have been funding a large portion of Axiom's like monthly costs, like all of the salaries and the, the team houses and all the flights and things that, so, you know, awesome. I, I'd like to thank everyone who's subscribed to the channel right now because you guys really helped. So, really, yeah, you I, guys did it. You guys won it. Yeah, you were the guys who it's won all it. all you. Yeah, our you guys, guys did absolutely nothing. I'm glad they're Korean and not watching this show because they'd kill me. But yeah, <laughs> so big thanks and obviously thanks to our sponsors, Waz to Keyboards and Planet Side Two for you know supporting the team. That is so crazy though, like how well your team has done. It's amazing. It's so we, awesome. We went seven one in the group stage. Like we we lost one series. It was it was bonkers. Right, we have a small team as well. Like mm -hmm. Startail has like twenty players. We've got like seven. What? Yeah, we've got like the bare minimum required to actually play the league. We didn't even have a Zerg player before the second round. We played it all with Terran and Protoss. So it's like we're missing one third of the race choices out of our team lineup because we just don't have any. Right. You know? So it was it was pretty great. I, I'm really proud of them. They worked really hard. They wanted it more than anything, and I think they wanted it more than any other team as well, and it showed in the results. You know, they took it seriously. So I was really proud of them. And then, of course, we had the Red Bull Battlegrounds, which a lot of people went to. We had a, a packed house in the Hammerstein Ballroom, which is apparently where they do all those ECW matches and, like, I think it's some MMA fights and things like that there, too. So it was a really cool venue, and the games were absolutely fantastic. They were really, really good. I enjoyed it a lot, and the crowd was great, and everything went really well. And congrats to Parting for winning that. He, he is the least mannered player in Korea right now. He is a very <laughs> rude man, but it was, you know... He's got a great personality, so yeah, I'd come there too. <laughs> and I played no fucking games like this week. I haven't. I've played nothing because I've been traveling all week. Actually, no, that's not yeah. true. I played a little bit more of Devil May Cry on my uh, Razor Edge tablet when I was on my way back from, yeah. Well, I was on my way back on the train. I'm like, you know what? I haven't played in a while in, and didn't finish Devil May Cry. So I, I pull up Devil May Cry and I start playing it. And it works really well on the tablet and the controls. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, this game's pretty cool. Although I am really getting into these areas where they deliberately put the the different flavored enemies that you can only damage with one type of weapon in the same monster pack. I'm like, fuck you. Like, Ninja Theory, yeah. you are assholes for that. That is a, that's a horrible thing to do. It's still pretty fun, though. Like, the level design in that game and just the sheer creativity in the visual aesthetic of it blows my mind. It's... Hmm. I, I got to the prison level, and, like, everything's fucking upside down. Everything. <laughs> and it's brilliant. It's just brilliant. It's so well designed. Did you and, play the uh, TV news boss fight yet? I think I haven't got there yet. Is it that That's good? Great. Yeah. I, I did the succubus boss fight, which is like, wow, the dialogue in this is terrible. Like, whoever wrote this thought this sounded really scary and edgy to a 10-year-old. Yeah, I mean, the, the, <laughs> wow. the demons are about, like, basically eating, eating Dante, shitting him out, and then eating him again, and then vomiting him out again. I'm like, what? What are you? No! <laughs> You're this like, is uh -huh. creative. This is like on the level of going to your 10 year old friends, right. like, you smell like poo. I'm like, ah! <laughs> so edgy. But I, I still like that game. I understand why old school Devil May Cry fans don't, but it actually fixed a lot of the things I didn't like about the Devil May Cry series and focused on things that I did like. So, you know, it made the platforming fun again, it got rid of the puzzles. It got some interesting level design, and I still think the combat's, you know, it's simplified in comparison, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. So I I will be one of those guys that defends DMC and actually kind of hope that Ninja Theory gets a second crack at it. Yeah. But that's all I played. That's the only thing I have the time to play. That means there's only one thing else left to talk about. What's that? 
Indeed. Bidding. Yeah. Well, we'll be talking about a lot more about that, I think, after the break. In fact, that's probably the best time to talk about it, because there's a lot of Xbox One and PlayStation 4 related stories. And we are pretty much at the top of the hour. So why don't we take a break, come back, talk okay. about Xbox One, which I believe most of us have had the chance to play now. You're watching the Co-Optional Podcast. Going on a quick break. Please do not go anywhere. We shall return. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back to the Co-Optional Podcast. You just heard... A pretty fantastic mix from the new Killer Instinct game. I believe that was the opening theme, Jago's theme, the continue theme, and Orchid's theme. And that's a great way to lead back into the show to talk about Xbox One. Yeah. Killer fucking Instinct is actually great. Is Just it? Like, yeah. So, it's actually the only game I've had the chance to play so far on the Xbox One, because obviously I just got back <laughs> last night. But we yeah, played yeah. we'll play a good few rounds of it. Uh, Jen was complaining that Saberwolf was OP, and Chris was playing Saberwolf, so I'm like, alright, I'll see if I can beat him, second game. Yeah, he went down pretty hard, but that game feels awesome, like, it feels really, really great, it, graphically, it's, I mean, I'm not gonna say next gen, because it's a fighting game, like, pretty much any fighting game can look like that if they put enough effort into it, but the music blows my mind, and... Isn't it strange that we just got this game from a company that, let's just say their previous record wasn't quite up to snuff. <laughs> made just terrible games before. Yeah, Battleship, G.I. Joe, Rise of the Cobra, and what was the other one? Green Lantern. Yes. Just, just awful. I mean, just... Quality shit. Makes me glad I played none of those games. Oh, they well, they had a reputation of being nothing but shovelware. So when they first announced that, oh, there's going to be a new Killer Instinct game, it's going to be made by Double Helix, I was smashing my head off the desk. I'm like, why would you give them that? What is wrong? Did you not see their previous? Like, they made some of the worst games in the last few years. And then they fucking busted out with this. Like, the fuck? Is this the same developer? They, this is great. I was shocked. Really shocked. But, I enjoyed it. I'm good. terrible at it, but... Oh, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I, I suck at it right now, too. I want to spend a lot of time with the training mode, because apparently that's really good. I, it is. It, it just I it teaches it. you so much about fighting games. Yeah, it's step-by-step, step and, you know, I was with friends, so they were getting bored. <laughs> they were like, all right, so do three medium punches, and they're just like, when are you actually going to fight? I'm like, well, you just saw me fight, and I lost, like, the, the fifth match because I can't do anything. You yeah, know? you don't understand. You can only smash buttons for so long and get so far. Which, by the way, just like any fighting game, that was pretty fun. Just, like, doing this to the controller and be like, I wonder what's going to happen. And just yeah. really cool <laughs> things happen, like slow motion, zoom in, fireball, you know, crazy stuff. It's like, I wonder how you actually do that. So, yeah, I did the training mode, and, and I learned a lot, but um, my friends got bored, so I felt bad. Oh, It's something... Right. Sorry, Sorry. Dodge, go ahead. Uh, I, I haven't played the Xbox One yet at all. I haven't played Killer Instinct at all. But I totally agree that that's one of my favorite parts about a new fighting game is being like, how did I do that? And then once you realize like how to do it, you're like, God, it just feels so awesome. Like I It really it. does. I, I was, I go through, like, whenever I play a new fighting game, I go through the usual motions of trying to figure out, right, okay, does Shoto-style quarter circle do anything? Because in most fighting games, it does. So you instantly know a few moves and a few combos based on the fact that you. I played quite a lot of Street Fighter. And I only played Shoto characters. I.e. Ryu, Ken, Dan. Mostly Dan. And as a result, you can pick it up pretty quick. And once you learn the fundamentals of how fighting games work, you can pretty much play any fighting game to a decent level. You know, you, Because you just understand beyond what button mashing is. You can also beat a button masher because you know how to counter that. Yeah. That's the... Unless the... it's Jesse. Every time I fight Jesse in a fighting game, it does not matter how much I've played that game. He's like, I'm gonna just walk on in here and uh, go like this. And he always <laughs> wins. And it pisses me off so <laughs> bad. Well, Jesse's gonna love Killer Instinct then because a, a lot of the sort of basic combos are done by just kind of mashing the buttons a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you want to do the truly good stuff, and also you got to watch out for, you know, if you become too predictable with those combos, you'll get combo breaked and then you just get smashed. But can I, I, just... I can, I cannot say that I've played it. I haven't. But everything I see, it looks beautiful. But I don't know how entertaining it is to watch. Like, does that make sense? Like, I like watching fighting games. Yeah. 
I it, it's it's very flashy, and there's a lot of stuff happening. Yes. I don't know if that makes it an entertaining game though. I think like it, can, it can cause problems because, you know, a lot of the stuff that happens with Street Fighter, people will play on the training stage, which is basically like just a Star Trek holodeck, like it's just a grid. Because stuff that goes on in the background can be a little bit distracting. And I feel the, the characters do blend in more to the background than they do in other games, and that can be a problem. Yeah, I mean, e even, even watching what you just uh, showed, or actually are still showing on the stream, I think. Yeah. Uh, there's just, it's just a lot. It's like a sensory overload of things happening. Yeah. That if you're watching it, after a while, you're just like, well, this occurred. And, and I think it's one of the things that I like about Street Fighter watching that go down is it's very methodical. And when something yeah. amazing happens, it's like, oh, shit, that just yeah. happened. It's, this mm -hmm. is like something amazing is happening all the fucking time. And it's like, all right, we get it. This yeah. game is, there's a lot of stuff happening. We get it. But from a casual yeah, yeah. perspective, that's really nice. You know, Street Fighter 4 is my favorite fighting game ever. And I love watching Street Fighter 4, and I love playing Street Fighter 4 when I get the chance to do that, which is why I'm looking forward to the Ultra Edition when it comes out quite soon. That'll get me right back into it, just the way that I was before. But for this, like, I can sit down, play it, have a good time, play it against some other people, and even if they don't know a lot about fighting games, because the combo system, like, at least the early combos are relatively easy to do, they can still be a little bit competitive and feel like they're doing well, even though I'm about to smash them. So, and the training mode is on the level of of Skullgirls, which I think has the best training oh. mode in fighting games. Yeah. This is on that level. Now, I don't know if you can do that training mode if you don't pay for it. I, I don't know if the dojo mode is available if you don't at least buy the $20 version of the game. If it was, and if that was available yeah. for free, that would be like the best tutorial to get people into fighting games ever. But mm -hmm. I can't yeah. imagine that's free. I bet we can find out. Let's find out. So a lot of people criticized the pricing model of Killer Instinct, and they were really kind of wrong to do that. Because Killer Instinct's pricing model is actually one of the fairest in the industry right now in terms of different ways to buy the game. Yeah. And I love the fact that you can buy the game in pieces if you want to, just buy it straight up, or maybe never. Or maybe just never buy it. You just decide to play the rotating character because you don't play too much. You play every once in a while. And you can have fun like that as well. And I think more games should do that. I really do. I've been, I've been preaching this actually since... Capcom started doing it with their stuff on iOS, and I was like, this is great! First two episodes of the game, free. And then you can buy episode packs, or you can just buy the whole thing. So you, if you if you don't finish, feel like finishing the game, you don't have to buy the whole game. Which is, it's awesome! That's consumer friendly. I'm curious, do you know uh, the end price model? Like, say, if you want all the content, like, right now, do you know what, what that adds up 40 to? 40 bucks. Um, yeah, okay. Ultra See, Edition is yes. thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah, we got Ultra Edition. And you get the same number of characters as the Combo Breaker Edition, which is 20 bucks, which gives you the six launch characters and the two that are available after. But Ultra gives you, like, all the costumes for every character. It gives you the original Killer Instinct arcade game to play, as well as accessories for each character. I'm like, you know what? I don't mind paying 40 bucks for a fighting game. That's fine. Yeah, yeah that's, but, that's standard, man. Yeah. And each character is $5 each, but, you know, it's 20 bucks for the Combo Breaker pack, so... It's cool because if you just, maybe you just don't like the other characters. I know a lot of people like to main a character, right? And if you're the kind of person that just plays online, and you have one character that you like to main, that's the only one you play, pay $5. You just bought your game for 5 bucks. That's pretty good. Apparently, I'm being told as well that like Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate has a similar model as well. It seems like a lot of fighting games are going towards this model, and I like it. I like it a lot. That's a hmm. great... It's an absolutely fantastic idea. Now, do you like this model better than, like, the old, just, like, you know, a full, complete fighting game with everything, and that's your only option for 40 bucks or whatever? Yeah, I, I, okay. I, of course I do, because it's an option. It's like you can buy the same game in the same way that you always did, or you can buy it in a different way. Options are always good. Like for me, I'll always yeah. buy the full game, because, you know, money's not really a problem for games, but for other people... It's a big deal that they can actually, they can get in on the ground floor. They have an entry-level option. Right. The only thing that worries me is the quality because, like, I mean, if, if these are done right, for instance, if, if Killer Instinct does this right, which I don't know because I have the, I believe, the $20 version, and, um, like, say, for instance, when I was young and I bought Street Fighter Two Turbo, you know, and but my mom only got me the $5 version, and that's all I had, and, you know, my friends had the full version, 
but we couldn't afford the full, you know, the full version, or, or she didn't want to because there was a five dollar version. She's like, oh, well, you already have the game. Uh, you know, that type of stuff it makes me feel weird. And just okay. because, you know, those type of situations arise in my mind, I'm not sure if this stuff happens in the real world with this or it will. But you, you know what I'm saying? Like, makes, yeah, you know, I do. Like with Mortal Kombat, like, you know, everyone had Mortal Kombat when I was growing up and you had Mortal Kombat. And so everyone had the same playing field of characters and moves and, and everything. And um, I, I'm just trying to think back, like, say, when I was younger and getting those games, what would it have been like if, like, say, for instance, my friend had the full version of Mortal Kombat, but my, right. you know, my parents were like, well, you don't need the full version. You only need this, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. It's okay. Just kind of that. That's exactly what the concerns that I had uh, that we talked about last week is I was, uh, I, or I guess two weeks ago, I was concerned about the fact that um, there are characters that you wouldn't have access to. And so you wouldn't necessarily know everything there is to like, you're not getting the full game, and so there's a, a you know, you're, you're going to go play online, and then some dude just going to kick your ass because you don't have well, the, the full experience. In theory, though, the it. game should be balanced to stop that from happening. Yes, Dodger? I mean, that's... In theory. What, that's, why are you wet? What happened to you? <laughs> um, I mean, that's... Somebody might have said this already, but that's the same... I was really busy trying to kill a fly. It's the same as with League. I mean... Like, you only have access to a few heroes at any given time for free, but you're still going to play against people who could possibly use a hero that you've never seen before or never played mm-hmm. with. Yeah. Although, League is actually even more of an intense problem. Right now, the Killer Instinct lineup is six, and there will be mm-hmm. eight. Now, they're going to yeah. rotate through, like, which character is free, I believe, every week or so. But in theory, like, balancing an eight-man roster is a hell of a lot fucking easier, especially in a 1v1 game than, like, a 112-champion roster. And there are some flavors of the month in that game that you might not have access to. It happens because mm-hmm. Riot's balancing is not perfect. Yeah. And I, n- nobody's balancing is that perfect when you're dealing with a roster that large. But I mean, I certainly see your point. I think you can kind of get away with it with Killer Instinct because it's b- basically a digital only game. So parents are not going to be saying stuff like that because they probably don't understand it. Then <laughs> it's like, oh, you can have the $5 version. They'll probably just say, oh, this game's 20 bucks. Can I have it? It's like, oh, it's 20 bucks. I paid 60 for Forza, and then, you know, another 80 for the fucking DLC bullshit. I'm fine to pay $20. Incidentally, all game modes are available even on the free one. So you can download this fucking thing for free and learn fighting games on the fucking dojo mode. How is this not good value? Yeah. It's great. Quared. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, That's what I played on Xbox One so far. I also have Forza, I've got Fr- Crimson Dragon, and I've got Dead Rising 3, but I haven't played any of them yet. Have any of you guys played any of the other Xbox Ones yet? Yes. I haven't uh, even touched I, an Xbox One. I haven't touched a controller. I have done nothing pertaining to an Xbox One at all. What so do that's you where see, I stand. Jesse, what do you see? All right, as someone who owns one, yes. Um, I, you know, I, I want to point out that uh, having both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One now, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's sheer pandering or if it's the fact that Xbox One's slightly winning me over, but Xbox One's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's kind of wonderful. And they really went a little beyond unnecessarily, but, like, you get an Xbox One day one achievement. Like, really stupid Oh, things. that's bullshit <laughs> stupidity. God damn it. You get, you get this bad boy that's, like, Xbox, like day one controller. Day one controller, yeah. Like, just nonsense stuff. And they're just like, we're going to kiss your ass because you bought this game. <laughs> and, and my favorite thing, I thought I would hate Connect. Thought I would, I hate Connect as it was on Xbox 360. Thought I would hate New Connect. Kind of, kind of love it. I, kind of, <laughs> yeah. Kind of love it. You have to admit like that where, it's a technical masterpiece. I mean, for what it is, it's amazing. Like, well, this time around, it's app? actually powerful enough as well to do what right? they said it would do. Mm-hmm. Right. My favorite thing, and I'm going to use this as an example because I don't need Xbox Live codes, but and so what you can literally do, this is my favorite part, is just be like, Xbox, I got a freaking code. And it's like, boop. And then you just show this to the screen, and you don't even have to type in the code. It and just it just takes does it. Yeah. It's the most beautiful thing in the oh, world. Oh, that's it's like, awesome. What? And it's like, bing, you have access to all this new stuff. I'm like, you guys, this is, <laughs> this is what I needed. I don't have to it's type in all like that crap anymore. Oh, it's the best. It's legitimately the best. The, and um, 
The machine I, is so convenient in a lot of ways. Yeah. I, everything, yeah. I haven't, I haven't had to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say this is my final impression of it because I have not had even remotely enough time to explore what the thing can actually do. But we turned it on when I got home because I wanted to do a couple of rounds of Killer Instinct before I went to bed. And the game started loading before I even told it to. Like, and there was a little window in there. It's like, oh, it's starting to load the... It's, it's doing what? Like, this is a basic, sensible thing. And the way yep. that their OS is designed, yes, it eats a lot of the power of the system up to do it. But if you're, you know, if you don't really need that power, I suppose, it just makes everything faster. It makes everything snappier. I don't have to pick up the controller yet. When I do pick up the controller, it recognizes who I am and loads my profile. It's like, we want to save you time. It is <laughs> genuine. Seriously, it's genuinely faster to get stuff done that way, which is like, this is so nice. Because having, having people around, I even tested it to see recognizing stuff. And it recognized me in, like, 20 different it. positions. Like, even my back turned to people. And then having other people in front of the camera, it was like, bing, and it puts a little thing, a tag above your head. And it's like, I know mm. you. The rest of these assholes are guests. And I was like, oh. yep. That's amazing. Unfortunately, <laughs> it also does that to cats once in a while. It's apparently it picks up cats as guests at times. But it's still a guest. That's, it's still a guest, fun. which is get them. I, I'm fine with that. Cats could be guests. De I'm Dex fine with uh, being a guest. <laughs> Brooke's going to actually get them their own profiles. <laughs> You gotta test that. Gotta All right, okay. I'm Here's your video. To. Video idea, right? Get your okay. Xbox One. Okay. Yep. See if you can get the cats recognized with their own profiles and then do a few tests to see if when they walk onto the connect, <laughs> it actually loads the cat's profile. Do it. Do it. Oh my god. See, yeah, the connect, it, it. it's a powerful tool, man. And, and we had a lot of fun with it. Now, what, I did notice one bug. Like, it noticed me with my glasses on, off, hat on, off. You know, it's still, but. Uh, my friend was standing here, and, and, and I was standing here, and it recognized me. Like, oh, let's try this. So I scooted behind him, and my tag, you know, <laughs> I, I was smooth, and it went behind. And then whenever I did that, it bugged out, and my friend was was smooth. And then I I exited, and then That's I hilarious. was the guest, and he was smooth. And we were like, wait a second, I think we, we found a bug. <laughs> and so he had to go all the way off screen, Lol. and then come back on, and it reset it. But th I, there are some, you know, things like that. That's but really but we're funny. I like to do things like that. I like to see what happens when you do things that you're not supposed to do. Oh, yeah, it's not perfect at all. The one thing I will say, though, about Xbox versus PlayStation. PlayStation, it, there's a lot of different tabs and stuff, but it's very simplistic. Like, you like you can figure out where you're going to go. There isn't a lot of crap there. Xbox is like getting a, like a laptop at Best Buy. There is just a lot of bloat shit on there. Yes. Like, yeah. just random things you don't need that they're just trying to give you. And it, I was like, guys, I don't. I'm not ever going to use Skype on my Xbox. It's never going to happen. <laughs> no, I'm not absolutely cloud not. Storage. Like, I go in there to get away from the internet. Fuck Skype. Yeah. I don't want people calling me. Yeah, it, it's like, yeah, everyone's like Bing. Bing is perfect. I'm never going to use Bing. Bing. I don't care about <laughs> Bing. Like, it, and... and that that kind of annoyed me, but other than that, I was really really impressed. And having played a, a game on, and it might just be the games, I assume. But uh, even though Rise is legit, I was wrong. It is legit QT, 100% QT. Yes. I love it. I, I still love it to death. I enjoyed the shit out of it. But it's it's QT without QTE. Like uh, it's you, guys get highlighted in colors that correspond with the buttons rather than a button popping up on the screen telling you what to press. So you can still kill the guy whatever way you want, but if you press, you know, like yellow, it's like, oh, I gotta hit Y. Or blue, I gotta hit X. Like, if that pops up, though, that's like, gets you the most points, right? So it's QTE, but that's they're gonna not QTE, pretend it's QTE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, it, I mean, it looks, it genuinely looks beautiful. It is gorgeous. It is, there's some scenes where like, Crytek, man, those guys are, masters of making things look good and having played Killzone Killzone looks nowhere near as good and I was like that might be because this game is designed just look beautiful and not really have that much to do in it well, but yeah unless there's no substance whatsoever so that's yeah. probably got something to do with it <laughs> but with that said I was like at least now I can see how far Xbox can push graphics because I was worried that it's not as good a machine as PlayStation 4 well it isn't and so, like it flat out isn't like, statistically no, yeah, and so I'm like, well, let's see what they can do. And the game looks great. It looks really, really great. The one big thing that I think angers me the most about the controllers 
I mean, the, the biggest thing is here on this bad boy, you can plug in any microphone. On this bad boy, you need the uh, uh, Xbox special garbage microphone. Yeah. That pisses me off. I was like, I no one that. wants to use that little shitty headphone thing you have that's just like the other ones you had. It's yeah. so dumb. So dumb. And they missed the opportunity to have like third party marker, like all sort of stuff they could have added. Like, no, you have to use the Microsoft one. That annoys me. That was kind of, I was like, mm, everything else so far I love, but you're killing me, Xbox. You're killing me. So oh, I'm watching this Rise gameplay right now. It's like, why will you not stop slowing down for everything? That's what really <laughs> annoys me about it. It's like, you were talking about those QTEs, and it's like, you get into the flow of combat, and then this is like, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Like, stop! It's, let me play. It's, it's, what's crazy about it, and I think it's actually really funny, is if you are surrounded by guys, if you can get a killing blow off, you'll like unsurround yourself. It's fantastic. So instead of having to block, 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 and then go for the kill, you can just quickly kill a guy. And then when you get back out, the guys are like, that was our buddy. That's so why did you do that? And then you can just go and kill him again. <laughs> I, I'm like, this game is right up my alley. There, I played on normal and I just breezed through it. I was like, maybe I'll do like a playthrough on hard and see what happens. Because normal was not a challenge. I was like, this is did great. Did you beat it? Yeah, literally in a day. How like, long did it take? Right. What do you reckon? Five hours, maybe? Mm -mm. It's not a long game. It's not the game long. has multiplayer, Here's right? I was gonna say yes, we've, it does. we've barely it does. been home for very yeah. long at all. Yeah, <laughs> and you beat it anyway. It, so. I picked I picked up uh, my Xbox uh, yes yesterday morning and played it in a day and was like, this is great. The thing is, is that it's 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 very very short, and I think the reason why, and this is what I heard, it could be total rumor. I don't know, but originally was it not supposed to be a Connect game? I thought that was like, Crimson Dragon that was supposed to be a Connect game, not Rise. I'm pretty sure that was never supposed to be Connect. I, I'm I'm really curious because it there's moments where you there's you feel like I could have played this on a Connect. Plus, there's a lot of the talking. My that's my favorite part. My favorite part is shouting orders at people, and then <laughs> arrows fly out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, I fired arrows with my <laughs> mouth. <God. laughs> <laughs> 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 it's just fucking arrows everywhere. <laughs> the best part is, is that it has a length of how long you have to say it. So you, have to, you have to shout it really, like, for a long time. So you're just like, fire arrows! <laughs> 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 I am the... way too easily amused. I was having a blast. I was like, You've just great. discovered a new level of socially awkward. <laughs> just like, yeah. you're standing yeah. in the middle of your apartment. You, it's like you're wearing boxer shorts only. No one else is around. It's like, fire arrows! <laughs> It was great. I was like, this is just my level of class. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> plus, plus the first level, you get like 50 achievements like that. <laughs> or else I did I did really well. I don't, I don't think that was the case. But it was just like, uh, there were so many achievements, it was covering up dialogue. I was like, I don't even know what they're saying. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting achievements. I was like, this game is great. <laughs> yeah, Crimson Dragon was like that too. Oh, it had the same type of deal going on where just achievements would pop up and yeah. you're actually failing, like not doing very good at the level and you're just getting all these achievements. And I don't know, just, just the way it goes with the the new achievement system. I don't know, it's fun. It was, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm actually pleased that I get to experience this much at Xbox now because down the line, I have a feeling I won't be playing much. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, Xbox, you don't have that many great games coming out. But. Yeah, you know, let's let's be honest. Like the launch lineup for the Xbox One, they they won with that. Yeah, like if you're an early yeah. adopter, way better than. Yeah, PS4. it's like get get an Xbox One because unless you really like Killzone, there was literally nothing good for you to play. But actually, no, that's not fair. Because I, I, I say that from the perspective of someone that's a PC gamer and would never buy Assassin's Creed Four or anything like that on a console. The best version of Assassin's Creed Four on console is the PlayStation Four version. Yeah, highest oh, yeah. detail, yeah. looks the best. Without fail. So if you want to buy that, or you want to buy a next-gen Battlefield, but you don't have a powerful PC, yeah, actually I can see that being a complete reason to get a PS4 on launch. But if you're not yeah. that guy, and you also don't like their free-to-play games, there is nothing to play. The exclusives are Killzone and bad stuff. So, <laughs> no. Yeah. They just, no. There's, there's yeah, games I, I that... I Loco Cycle, I believe is what it's called. I am so sorry. Uh, <laughs> did you play that? 
Have any I, of you played that? I played a little bit of it, and it was an early no. version. I'm like, I guess they could make this better. Okay, well, <laughs> oh, no. here, here's my experience. Oh, because no. I, the only time I played Xbox uh, was whenever I was in a group of people. And, um, you know, Crimson Dragon was fun to watch. Uh, you know, Rise is pretty. Forza is, is, is beautiful, but when you start playing it, it's just a racing game. Yeah. And, you know, people left the room. Uh, Loco Cycle was, uh, you know, a little bit awkward with the cutscene things and stuff, with the story. But um, that, that was the game that um, most people stayed and watched because it actually had a bit of a story. And um, it had the humor going for it. You know, you're a motorcycle robot. You, you play as the, the, the you know, female robot motorcycle who is clueless about what's going on but is insanely powerful. And you're dragging Pablo along the entire game. I mean, Apparently was, the uh, game's borderline racist. Right? That's what, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard a, a lot of people be like, I don't want to support this game because it's really racist. <laughs> okay, like, to me, I mean, it's, I don't think it's racist. I mean, it's just like a situation, and it's not. it didn't offend me, and it didn't offend anyone else that I was with. But um, that was the game that, like, everyone stayed in their seats and was, like, watching the whole time because uh, the story was going on. Um, the gameplay wasn't horrible. I mean, it was really fun to, like, shoot at, like, tanker trucks with a motorcycle while you're getting, like pursued by secret agent people and you have to kill them at the same time and it was it was action oriented so um it was a lot it was a lot of fun to watch i guess but mm -hmm. i will say this um if you guys haven't played the uh, the connect sports demo that is probably going to be the most popular oh there's a demo for it yeah there's a, there's a connect sports I was gonna say, oh, Xbox Live. you were really excited about that yeah yeah because yeah, i knew because then i realized it wasn't gonna be a launch time like oh but yeah there's only one uh game open and it's jet ski Feels okay. like Jet Moto. If you guys ever played that on PlayStation. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And um, that that was by far the most played. Uh, in in a multiplayer situation, I mean, we were just cracking up constantly because uh, basically, you know, you only have the, the Jet Ski game. You know, there's going to be bowling and like shooting and all sorts of other games. But so we we're just like, oh, we'll try this, and we open it up, and you know, you can play uh, two players right now, one or two players, and two players is the way to go because it's hilarious basically you control your jet ski like a jet ski you have your hands out like this it senses your fists and you steer like this back and forth and if you do it wrong you do it wrong and you know we had friends that were doing that and were failing and it was pretty funny but um and, and you lean your body to do sharp turns but the most funny thing is that um well there's two funny things one like they have, there's a lot of jumps in that game and so whenever you go off a jump you get extra speed boosts and stuff if you do Front, uh, front flips or back flips or like fist pumps in the air whenever you go off a ramp and that's all gauged off your body movement. So if you go off a ramp and do this, you know, you, you can actually see the character in game doing this. And that's pretty fun. It was, it was, and to do uh, flips, you have to like, you have to like literally do a backflip in the middle of the room. Or this. <laughs> yeah, you have and, to and so, you straight know, like, up gymnastic. Like, yep. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it is it is hilarious to watch. And, you know, a lot of people, they'll be focusing so much on the flip, they're aiming wrong. So they'll, they'll do like a front flip and just crash and burn in the stands. But uh, we had a lot of fun with that game. The, the controls, they weren't the tightest, you know, just like everyone has said. Even though the Kinect is an amazing technological feat, um, <clears throat> still it's not snappy. You know, it's it's not even as snappy as, as the Wii. And, uh, you know, the Wii's got some lag. So that was kind of, you know, you had to get used to the lag, the latency, I guess. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun. Um, honestly, the Xbox that I played on will, will probably get the most play whenever they fully release that game. Hmm. Because um, that's just kind of the way, I don't know, it, it was the most fun. Even though it was the not, you know, not the snappiest controls. One of the funniest moments was... Whenever we started playing that game, um, whenever we started realizing that our rider emulated our movements, like uh, my buddy, I think things did, would start getting really silly at that oh, point. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. he, he just he just does this with one hand. He takes one hand off the, off off the the jet ski and just does this, and like just starts fist pumping and he's not even going and we're just cracking. <laughs> yeah. Up. And then you know he does it with the other hand and then he starts yeah. like waving back and forth and he's not even moving and then he puts. He puts his fists on there and starts going. And it, I mean, just moments like that. That's what I remember most about loading up the Xbox is that free demo game with just yeah. one jet ski game. So that's awesome. That's what I came with it from. Yeah, I, just, I, I just got sent in chat, just linked it to you. Uh, Rise was, in fact, it was a initially. Game. Yeah. They said they couldn't get and it working properly or whatever. Yeah. The video is really funny because the guy's like, you are the warrior. It's just some dude in his room. Like pretending oh, he has a no. shield and sword. It's like, oh, connect videos are so bad. 
Well, the funny thing is that there's, it was um, PlayStation like Sports Champions, I think they called it. They actually had a sword fighting game in that where you used two, uh, two of the PlayStation moves, and it was actually good. Like because oh. you could at least you had a physical hat thing in your hand instead of acting like a complete jackass. So it's like you could like shield bash with that hand. You like attacked with this. You had a jumping attack. It was great. But I can't see myself doing that with a Kinect. It's, I guess you have uh, to get a prop. Star Wars, Star Wars was a was a thing. Yeah, yeah, and I hated it. I I don't think I'll be playing many of those Kinect games, mostly because my room isn't set up for it. We've got the sectional kind of fairly close to the TV, so I don't think we've even got the space. Which it seems like they designed the Kinect to be used, at least in terms of like playing the full on body games, where the sofa was like halfway across the room and you actually had that kind of space. And we didn't set our room up that way. But I mm. like the fact that there's Kinect functionality for people that sit the fuck down for once. You know, whereas the other Kinect was not like that at all. The good things about Kinect are making the control of like menus and shit better. Yeah. That stuff you can now do while sitting down, which is fantastic. Because you couldn't do that with the original. It was like, get up and dance! Like, no! I don't play games to be active. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, I want to be lazy. That's why I'm here. I think like the most obnoxious part, I actually, I never owned a Kinect. But whenever I would go to somebody's house and they had a Kinect, the most obnoxious part was when they would try to get the Kinect's attention and just be doing this for like <laughs> minutes at a time. And it would finally be like, oh, hey, do you need me? It's like, God, what? While we're on the subject, I think there was a, a news story that I, I, we talked about a, a week ago about PlayStation huh. selling so quickly. And we had questions whether Xbox would as well. And apparently it and did. If I'm not mistaken, in, in less time. Yeah, but uh, they also sold it in multiple countries. Like, so that kind of uh, they kind of cheated. Like, about 144,000 of those were sold in the UK alone. The UK has always been very big into Xbox, but really? the, yeah, but mostly Europe is really big into PlayStation. So it, the UK doesn't consider itself part of Europe most of the time. So there you go. But yeah, but the, said, the Xbox million. sold a million as well. Yeah. In 24 hours, they said, and I think it goes less to the excitement for Xbox and more to the excitement for new gen. Like, people are just mm -hmm. like, I want something yeah. new. I want something new, and yeah. Yeah, it explains both, because both have sold way more than, than the last launch console, so... Well, we've been waiting for the longest time for this. Uh, we yeah. have. It's, it is a big, uh, very, very big thing. And after a few years of everybody being like, are consoles dying? It's kind of nice to see so many people buying them. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, we shall see when the U.S. launch comes, because it may be a little bit of a weird flip, because I know the U.S. has been traditionally, for the longest time, very much Xbox. Uh, they, the PlayStation obviously caught up very significantly, and it came about equal. But yeah. for a good few years, it was Xbox would sell more than PlayStation 3 in the, the, in the U.S. But I think things may have flipped a little bit. So it's, it's good to see, because a healthy start for both systems is good for everybody. Oh, for sure. But of course, if you want to play the best games, then you should probably buy a PC. We got lots of them. We do it better. We do have a, we do have a lot of them, and they look a lot nicer. They look a lot nicer. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, 1080p60. Yeah, that's pretty standard for most of us. Let's go. You want a 1080p120? Because we can do that. It's pretty sweet. It is pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's pretty you, you want to get some G-Sync up on there for some really sharp images? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I would love some G-Sync. Yeah, I got some G-Sync. There you go. Let's get some G-Sync up there. Sorry. Uh, yes. Oh my god, PC's speaking still of better speaking, than everything. Speaking of PC Master Race, when we were at Larian, we had a conversation about how best to please you in uh, reviewing the game, and we told them that they should make an entire menu oh. of all... <laughs> of all FOB sliders. Just like 60 <laughs> FOB slider options. <laughs> Just hundreds of FOV sliders, and all of them do just nothing really, but they just exist. So you can move sliders back and forth. We were, we thought we were so funny. <laughs> it was very, at the time, we just, were laughing and laughing. Yeah. Just imagining really anyone opening up a menu and having there just be like pages, just pages of FOV sliders. Pages of FOV sliders, just, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 
the best shoot ever. <sighs> what? Dogs! Why do I think that's... Those are dogs? Those are cats. No, they're dogs. Oh. I love how only... Only Smooth McGroove actually understood what that t-shirt was. And the rest of you are like, what? <laughs> I don't know what that was. What was that? Kappa. It's Kappa. What the hell's what the hell's a Kappa? Go in a chat and type yeah, Kappa with a capital K. Go <laughs> you to you chat. Have to look at chat right now. Type Kappa. Oh, all the all those people. I still I still don't know what that is. I still don't know who the hell that Kappa. is. Kappa. <laughs> Who's Kappa? <laughs> We're on the outside of a joke, Jesse. Indeed, you are very much so. Oh dear. Where did you get that shirt? <laughs> uh, Twitch sent me like six of them in different sizes. Like I'm planning on burning the smaller ones and a fire. <laughs> lucky man. Yeah. Chat is going insane. So I like the one where I shoot Kappa. Mm. That's my favorite avatar. So it is not all wonderful, wonderful things for the Xbox One. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Because what? Microtransactions in fucking everything. Ugh. Welcome to the next gen of consoles. Yay! That that yeah, is something I noticed. Yeah, and I, I I haven't actually tried it, so I don't know if it is a legit microtransaction. But in Rise, for example, you can get points by doing combos and things like that, which then can be used to buy upgrades. Right. So the better combos you get, the more points you get, the better upgrades you can buy. But then there's like, or you can spend money. And I was like, is that in-game money, or is that, am I paying for this money? Because I have yet to earn real money. Am I doing that in the game? And it was, I, I never had to. I luckily could earn the points by playing. But I was like, are they saying that if I just pay money, I can be instantly good? Is that what they're yeah. saying? The My same own. thing happened in Crimson Dragon when we were playing. Apparently, that's jacked full of them. This Crimson yeah, Dragon is like, apparently so yeah, full of them. Yeah, because, you know, you, you go to the store thing, and it's got all these things you can buy, and then we get to this one currency. It's like crystals or something. You're like, oh, I, I wonder if I can get one of those. And then it's like, you know, you, that looks pretty cool. And you and you uh, you click on it. It's like, all right, enter your credit card information. It's just like sinking feeling in your stomach. You're like, really? This, <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, mm-mm, mm-mm. So I just evaded that for the rest of the game. Yeah, apparently just... Crimson Dragon is, like, super disappointing in the way that they do that because they are locking features, basically, behind cool. microtransactions. Yeah. Rise does it for its pay the kind of pay-to-skip thing for multiplayer, like, but you have to get to that tier of skills first before you're allowed to use that to unlock it. But people, they've argued, of course, Phil Harrison has said, no, no, it's totally fine, like, it's not pay-to-win or anything like that. And it's like, no, look, here's... Here's the problem, and this is the same problem I had with Dead Space 3 when they fucking did this. We cannot trust you at all to leave the proper progression system in the game intact if you also have a way of making money from it. Yeah. We cannot trust you to do that. At all. Mm -hmm. And that's one part of it. That's Rise's part of it. Crimson Dragon is really blatant, and like they, they lock apparently a lot of features behind microtransactions and like the economy in it is apparently just really bad yeah. i haven't had the chance to play it at this I mean, point we still beat it without microtransactions yeah you can just, still beat it it was so disappointing because again those really cool things that were like oh that's there in the game awesome and we went back and because you know we, maybe we can afford this now oh if we bring out our credit card okay so we just like yeah. didn't get that out of the game when we were beating it so yeah because you, you cannot do this whole pay to skip thing in games you're already paying money for and expect people to be okay with that because we cannot trust you to keep the pacing right. Yeah, we can't. It's because the the alternative is oh well, you've got to just play the game more, right? So what you will do is you will make me play the game more, and I'll get frustrated with the repetitious nature of it, and I'll just pay to get the next best thing. That I that's how that is. That is how that will be, and I cannot trust you as a developer not to do that. Yep, and in Crimson Dragon, that same model's there. You have to grind through yeah. old Yeah, and I should never have to do that. Road. In a single-player game, I should never have to fucking do that. The pa pacing is vital. Some of my favorite games of this year I've beaten in two hours. I don't have to get yeah. 40 hours of gameplay when 35 hours of that is shit repetitious bollocks. Yep. And, and you've done that because you 
basically would love to get a little bit extra out of me to skip this because like well i like your game but you're boring my game you're boring me with your game and maybe if i give you a little bit more money it'll be less boring there are so many horrible ways that could go mm-hmm. and it really disturbs me that this is becoming a standard on xbox one in particular i haven't heard of actually any of it on playstation 4 though i may have missed it but xbox one is riddled with it and then of course we get on to forza the game with day one car dlc yeah <laughs> oh and they, shit. they they even said it was gonna happen and i don't think anyone thought it was gonna be that in, intense like buy all of it oh man like, it, apparently uh... the microtransactions for forza 5 run as high as 32 pounds 50 right what which is about oh, that's what? over 50 dollars, and that's for one car one what? car you win a lambo <laughs> it's, no! it's, it's like, the lotus what? e21 32 pounds like 50 driving games it's like the truck and, and and farm sim games where people are like i'm paying i'm paying to ride in my fantasy like no, no. that's horribly exploitative you're saying that yeah. I have to kind of roll the dice on what my favorite car is, and if it happens to be the Lotus E21, then I've got to pay £32.50 for this fucking thing. It is a nice car, though. I mean, it's pretty... Pretty nice car. What do I got to pay to drive a Prius C? Oh, you get that for free. In fact, they... <laughs> awesome. They give you money. When you drive it, you get money in that oh, game. Oh, it's just like driving the real thing. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> if you want that car, you've got to work a huge amount to it. Like, a huge amount. Yeah. That's what you just gotta keep driving it, keep driving it. Yeah, the most exclusive cars, basically, like, they they take a monumental amount of effort to unlock. And at that point, you can't make the same argument. It's like, oh, you can just play for it. No, you deliberately made it super hard to get that car because you knew that it's highly desirable. It was the same issue with um, Marvel Heroes, which I think they might have actually changed since I just battered them in that video but they made the most popular heroes at the time the most expensive and the only yeah. other way to get them is via a random drop system and you can't can trade I, them can i just say we sit here mocking this i just received a bunch of skype messages that are along lines of this i would pay to drive that lotus in forza i bought an xbox 360 to drive one track in forza 4 which isn't in the game that is that is yeah that is in the game. That's the kind of stuff that, that people, I, I guess, will, I'll never understand it. I'll never understand the need to do that stuff. But it's real popular or else they wouldn't do it. It's true. That's the only, it's a simple money-making thing. They wouldn't do it unless people are willing to pay. Yeah. It's not that it's popular. It's just that it's not unpopular enough. Uh, people are not going to stop buying, well, yet, anyway, buying the games that do this kind of thing. And as a result... They can say, all right, well, the the positives outweigh the negatives, yeah? If one Mm -hmm. whale decides to buy, like, $100 of cars, then, oh, that $60 game just became a $160 game. He's worth more than all of these other people. Yep. And that's that's what most microtransactions are about, because they know that while a group of people like us will be like, that's insane, why would you ever... There are other people who, they're like, oh, I cannot wait to get that, and I will spend that money, and long term that's how they make the most money possible so mm-hmm. they're going to continue to do it as long as people do it we've said that sure. for, for years and years and people yeah. are like oh we won't ever do that no we've but been saying this for ages like yeah. sorry but we were pretty savvy like people are pointing out jim Sterling's <sighs> like yeah thing is like we were savvy to this as well we were saying this with dead space 3 at the start of the fucking year we were even saying this before that and it, it's got to the point where apparently this is now becoming standard on Xbox One. Mm-hmm. And the irony of it, the one game where people, like, because they didn't know the business model, were accusing of being like that, i.e. Killer Instinct, is the one that is the least like that out of yeah, all yeah. the games on that, on that system. Mm-hmm. Oh, I despise oh, it. Oh, what foolishness. Indeed. Bro, good, great. Thank you. Thank great you. Great acting, Macbeth. You hit it. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll do a repeat performance tomorrow. Wonderful. So, yeah, actually, we were saying that with Mass Effect 3. Its business model over the last few years has evolved in an, into a place that I really mm. dislike. And it's getting to the point where I'd actually rather play a free-to-play game, because at least they're upfront about it, than buy a $60 game and then have them fucking 
uh, try to slide microtransactions in via the back door and say, oh, but you don't need the, but we're going to make it a living hell for you if you don't. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think that's the line that I guess everyone's waiting for them to cross because it, it's a very fine line. Everyone's walking where it's... Um, uh, they already have crossed it, in my opinion. I, I, I mean, I would say we're on it. I wouldn't, I mean, there's a lot of times where... I feel like on the line we haven't crossed it yet. I, I'm just I standing mean, I, right on that line. Is the toe think, over the line? Is the majority of the shoe on the line? Oh, I, I, there's probably a toe. There's probably a toe. Okay. A, a little bit over. They may have scored a, a touchdown. We don't know. Get the line judges out. I feel. I feel like we just oh. need to. Ah! <laughs> no. <laughs> he decided to join. Sorry. <laughs> If you want more of that cat, you're going to have to pay $20 in microtransactions. $20 yeah. micro But here's the, thing. Here's the thing. Done. <laughs> here's the money. That's the line. That's the line is that you got the cat. So if you want more of the cat, you already got the cat. So yeah. if you want more of the cat, then that's DLC and you have to pay for it. But we gave you the cat. Like that's the line they're walking. And I think that, that you know, we, if, if you're going to get some of the cat, you can't complain. They gave you some of the cat. Right? So in most games, there's, they give you a bunch of extra stuff like cars that are $80,000, but you don't need that $80,000 car. If you want it, it's there. And until they're like, if you, you must have this car to race on this track, to play this thing that's in the game already, then, that's, then that becomes a problem. So like, if, if we then said, we showed you that cat, now you must pay us $14.99 to continue watching the rest of this podcast, then that would be a problem. But right now, we are on that fine line where they're like trying to pool all the money they can without pissing people off too much. Just yeah. pissing them off enough. It's, it's really, think... They're basically preparing the ground. Yeah, they're making... They're very, very, very slowly moving towards this state where it will be entirely okay for this kind of stuff to happen. And what really pisses me off is that these so-called time savers or pay to skip, you know what they used to be called? Cheat codes. They used to be called fucking cheat codes, and they Game were free. Genie. You know, Game Genie. <laughs> Game Genie. Game Genie yeah, in the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Oh my gosh, Game Genies were great. Yeah, and you didn't have to go and out your way to pay for that stuff. And you know what? In a single player game, if you wanted to cheat, that was that was on you. You could do that. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't <laughs> cheating in a single player game and paying money for it is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. There is no cow level though. Warcraft three and two. Yeah. No, the code in two was something different. There can, isn't there wasn't there, there can be only one. The only that one? was one of them, yeah. There were so many codes. Oh, yeah. Like, those were the days where it was like, all right, if you want to cheat, enter a code. And then they said, no more cheating. You have to earn it. But you could pay money for it. Yeah, it's like, oh, you earned it at your nine-to-five job. Yeah. Right. So give it to us. <laughs> give it. <laughs> I think the only game I ever memorized cheat codes for was The Sims. <laughs> Motherload, give yeah. you all the money. Yeah, again, <laughs> a, a great game to have that for because some people don't want they. Some people don't want the progression experience of kind of slowly building your house up. They just want to build they, their fucking dream house. They want to build a cool house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you're just like Motherload, cool. Motherload, Motherload, yeah. and you just get all the money, and then you was, build a dope house. Were there cheats in Sims Three, and did they ever try and sell you money in Sims Three? Like that's what I'm interested in knowing. I don't remember them ever shoving any microtransactions at me in the Sims Three, but I honestly yeah, they just don't sold remember. you twenty expansion packs instead. You know. Right, yeah. Yeah, that, oh, that is one thing that they did, is they killed the modding community. Because the, the games Sims before 3? that, yeah, the games before that had this huge, awesome modding community. Mm. And then in Sims 3, they were like, well, um, I mean, why would you need mods if you can buy our expansions? Exactly. <laughs> it was like, fuck yourselves. <laughs> it I, was the worst. Uh -oh. Well, Sims, Sims 3 Sims... had mother load as well. Sims yeah. 3 had mother load. So. Sims 4 is going to have an offline mode and modding tools built in from the start, which oh is gosh. like, oh, EA's being reasonable for once. That's nice. Sims 4 looks nice. so good. I don't I don't want to I don't want to put too much of my heart into it. Don't. But like they're they're letting you actually uh they're letting you actually make people look how you want them to look, <laughs> which is incredible to me. <laughs> they're like, "Oh, you want one guy who has like a, one huge muscle arm?" And then is super wimpy everywhere else. You can have that. And I'm like, yay! It's just... That's it. Smoothie, you look on. like you've been on the verge of 
saying something over the past few minutes. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this whole thing. Uh, I, I've been listening while Charles has been just kind of all <laughs> over the place. He's now sitting on my mouse. Um, Perfect. Yeah, I, I never played a Sims game. I don't know. The, the whole microtransactions thing is just something that I've, I've discussed so much with, you know, friends of mine. And it's just, I, I, I don't think I'll ever take part in it. I, I, and, and the people that I know, uh, the few people that I know in my personal life who are into microtransactions are people that play games that I don't care about. And <clears throat> that just seems to be a pattern. And I don't know. It's just for me, I think my whole thing is just like vote, you know, vote by not doing it. And I'm not go. going to do that. And I think I think I also learned early on a little mini story here. When I played Diablo 2 back when I was like 15, um, I quickly realized that there was an eBay community for selling items, and it wasn't legal, mm -hmm. uh, which is why it just, you got shut down. But um, right. I, I, uh, whether you know for better or for worse, I took part in that in little bits and pieces here and there, and I learned very quickly. And this is way before microtransactions in any games. Like this was organic microtransactions happening, you know. Um, you know, say a pair of gauntlets, a pair of frost burns were worth $45 on eBay. Well, I memorized this kind of stuff and I got to where I would trade in-game items and I knew all the values and I would, uh, you know, eventually I would trade two, say, $12 items that I knew that was what it was worth and I'd get a pair of frost burns and I'd make a profit and I would just do that a lot, a lot, you know, and, and then I, I ended up basically well, again, for better or for worse, making uh, more money than a lot of my friends who already had jobs. And because of that, I learned the type of people who were spending money. That was the big thing for me as a 15, 16 year old kid. I quickly learned the type of people who spent money on these games. And they were the type of people that I would never ever want to play with in my life. <laughs> they were people who didn't play games Monday through Friday. <clears throat> They were weekend warriors who, you know, worked 40 hours a week and then came home and they were tired and they wanted to cheat on a game. And so they would break out their wallet and buy frost burns and a silks of the victor and you know, all these Diablo 2 items. And I, like, I remember, again, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not, proud of, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not proud of doing this, but I remember the, the most expensive weapon that I sold was $250. And this guy that bought it was a 45 year old guy who his yep. AOL profile picture was a purple polo shirt with him with his bowling ball next to him and this woman with a mullet. And we had a <laughs> conversation. And, and he, he just talked about how he doesn't play very much, but he just wanted to do as good as he could when he could play. And he had no idea what he bought. And, you know, I had so many, I mean, I, I, could, I could talk for hours about the type of people that bought these items off of me. And it was just, you know, I, my, I blew my friends' minds because we were all gamers. We played games for fun, and we enjoyed it. And they, it blew their mind that people were doing this. And it blew my mind as well, but I was taking advantage of it because I, I <laughs> yeah, built man. a Pentium 3 computer before any of my friends had it because I had money. And, you know, it was just it was, it was an early life lesson for me. Uh, you know, it was microtransactions before microtransactions, and uh, I got to see kind of the demographic there and because of that I kind of think I have a little bit uh, maybe of a, a deeper appreciation of <laughs> why microtransactions exist and what type of people actually take part in them so mm. anyway right. yeah I, I can provide kind of a counterpoint to that as someone that play quite a lot of free-to-play games and is very much willing to pay to skip and boost and things like that because my time is worth far more than that money this is especially true considering what my career is so I need to get to a certain level as quickly as possible and more often than not, it really comes down to bad design. If I feel the desire to boost myself forward at that speed because your early game experience is that dull, then you have made a mistake in terms of designing your game. And it's also the, the same idea with all of this nonsense with Pay to Skip and Crimson Dragon and Forza. It's like you have elongated your experience to the point where I cynically believe, and I'm probably right, that you did it in order to try and force people into buying this latest car because they are just so sick. The, all they want, they want that car. They desire that car. And if you're going to put so many barriers in the way of them getting there, then people are just going to say, look, this isn't worth my fucking time. Right. Also, you don't have to play a game for 300 hours in order for it to be a worthwhile fucking experience. And do, do if you... again... Sorry, Jesse, go ahead. No, I was saying, do you do you wonder if, in the case of Forza, if it isn't also the car companies saying we don't want everyone to get our car? 
So you have to. So they need to pay extra for it. That's a really that's... interesting idea. The the, the fact oh. that like it, because it's super rare, they want to kind of keep that prestige. Keep it rare, and so it's mo it's even more money than you would think. And so only those Maybe. willing to spend the money, just like in real life have the right to drive that car. Yeah, like, I mean, I you, could you, could, maybe... you, could, you could still get the car, I believe, without without paying for it. But you've got to work so fucking much to get to that. You know, and they I, skew I, the game design because of that. That's where it just kills me. Yeah, because you know? they designed the game around that idea. <sighs> and that's not okay. Yeah. Unless it's a free-to-play game where it's just like, you know what? Yeah, you can do that stuff. Because this game is free. And I understand what your business model is. Forza is not free. It is a $60 game. Right. Yeah, it, it, it bothers me so much. And again, I think the multiplayer um, item selling, especially in MMOs or games like Diablo, which aren't MMOs, are just like massively multiplayer RPGs, I guess. Like th that type of stuff. And even in a lot of the Korean MMOs, like that stuff happened just organically where, where items had value because they had value. They're hard to get. And it was good game design. And because of that, uh, people started doing third-party selling and the companies didn't like that because they were making a cut of it, but it, the games were designed to where people actually enjoyed the game so much, the, the system was good, the item system was fantastic in a lot of these games that people actually ended up... I met a guy when I was, again, 15, who, was, who quit his job at 7-Eleven and was, uh, you know, making 15 grand a year at that time. He uh, was making 35, he made 35 grand that year selling Diablo 2 items. I mean, and... And it's just, you know, this it, it popped up organically because the Diablo 2 item system was fantastic. The game design was great. You know, it was rewarding to get those items. It was hard. And so people would pay for them. And, you know, in games like WoW, like we talked about, I mean, the illegal account selling thing. Accounts had value because it was <laughs> so much effort was put into that. And people wanted to do that because it felt good. And people wanted that because it's like, man, it's so hard to get. And a lot of times it took a lot of skill and guild politics to get that stuff. And so they would pay $1,000 for this character, you know, and it was illegal and Blizzard shut all that down. Yeah. But then they legalized, kind of legalized it anyway with the uh, auction house. Yeah. Well, but a, yeah my, my sorry, Jesse. Was... Uh, Jesse, you, the point that you made earlier was actually surprisingly accurate. So a there's a statement here. This is from like the big, there's a NeoGAF thread that like made a massive 200 page thread hating this thing, which I don't actually blame them for. I'm looking at it and saying and this is a statement from Turn 10 in regards the developer in regards to the transaction system. For those who want to spend some extra real money and get those exclusive cars, they'll have that option, but they will no longer devalue the hard work of those who earned the cars through racing and building up in-game credits. Either way, expensive cars will have a real rarity. They deliberately increased the price. There you go. In order to, and they're claiming that that's they're, they're claiming that's good for the gamer. They claim, well, you, we won't devalue the work of the other guys. Like, you know how else you could not devalue the work of the other guys by not having microtransactions in your game. There's a way not to devalue it. But no, you wanted the extra cash. Yeah, I mean, they could have just said. You have to work really, 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 really hard to get this, and you've earned it. You've earned the right to drive this thing. But they're also, you know, saying, or, or, just spend some money. You'll be fine. Which is a really, just nasty way of doing things but it really is because it's it's blatant that it's affected the design and the progression curve of the game way beyond what it should have the one the one thing about wow character selling that at least was like the silver lining is you could instantly tell who bought their characters yep like <laughs> that was it was like oh you have all this great loot and you don't know what the shit you're doing you're no longer in the skills like it's that kind of thing at least it was easy I don't know if that if the same thing can be said for a driving game or something like that. I, I don't. I'm not really a big driving game player, so I don't know. No, it's it's with with uh, illegal item selling again like that and character selling. Uh, again, from my own experience, it was quickly, it, it was really easily seen that these people had no idea what they're doing. They were buying these characters. They weren't. Most of them didn't even play for very long. Like. I mean, uh, in our guild that we had, um, you know, we had one guy that sold his character. Uh, the guy played for a week and then quit. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he, he, I don't even know how much he paid, like $500, $600. Another one uh, was, I mean, it's so many. The only instance that I remember in, in my entire server that I played on where uh, a character was bought and sold and actually got played was uh, for a PvP uh, arena team. Uh, my buddy sold his, his warrior because it was 
really well geared and he got a lot of money for it and you know he good for him whatever it was illegal but uh the, the guy actually transferred it to a server and ended up being like um playing in like competitive arena i think maybe even in uh whatever mlg thing they had at the time but uh shortly after that the character got banned because of some you know really i think i think that he was doing something illegal also with that character i don't remember so again, just not good experiences. It's like the whole scene driving with busted tail light and just having your entire car covered in cocaine. It's like exactly. problem yeah. officer. It's uh. like, what are you doing, man? You paid like nine hundred dollars for that. Care. I don't know. But with the illegal item selling stuff, that's organic, and that's interesting to me because I, you know, it's it's just kind of out in the wild happening mm. with the sanctioned selling. Like, we're designing a game around this four ninety nine item and also this nine ninety nine. All this twenty nine ninety nine. If you pay that, well, man. You can get double this and double that for this much longer, and it's just like, yep. It's mm. like, how about you don't take make it take five hundred hours to fucking unlock the cars? How about you try that? Because at that point, people just that you we know that people are gonna buy the car that they want because they can't be asked, and it becomes a, like a luck thing as well. Like, what if my favorite car is actually like the first car on the roster? I just got lucky, but what if I like a Lotus E twenty one? What if that's my favorite car? It's the same with guns in anything like Call of Duty or Battlefield. It's like, what if, say, the G36 is my favorite rifle? It's the rifle I like the look of the most, you know, and maybe a bit of a aficionado, or maybe enthusiast of that weapon. Or what if my favorite rifle happens to be an AK-47, which is the first gun or whatever? It's really annoying to be in that situation, I find. I guess yeah, it sounds a bit petty, know. but even it just, then... It, it devalues whatever that is for me. Like, for instance, in Forza, it's like that, that car. It's like, it makes me not even want to go for that car because it's like, well, it's cheapened anyways because you could just buy it with money. And, you yeah. know, uh, anyone can buy it with money. Even if even if you're in debt, you can put it on your credit card and pay that off in a year. And it's just like, it devalues it. Whereas in, in games that don't have any microtransactions, uh, those items are there. And when you see someone have it, it's like, oh, they did this to get that. Yeah. And the, and the progression curve to get it was probably fair as well. It was mm -hmm. probably reasonable. At least it was, you know, designed... It wasn't designed around a microtransaction, yeah. so... It wasn't artificially elongated with the notion of trying to tempt people into paying. Exactly. And why is it that it's, uh, developers themselves are saying, Oh, we can just grind for it. Nothing in your game should be a grind. If it is, can we just remember what grind originally meant? That's bad! That you shouldn't be celebrating that. Yes, Dodger. I, I've got to admit, since we're talking about this, I get oh, like... Oh. What? Nothing, what? I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Please, go. Go on. I get like go a, a weird... I don't know. I, I really enjoy playing games that are super microtransaction heavy and proving that I can beat it or get what I want without having ah, to buy anything. Okay. That's like, another... I, I kind of really enjoy that. There's um, that that game Battle Cats. It totally got to a point where they were like, "Hey, you wanna you wanna just buy the best cats?" And I was like, "No!" And I spent so long upgrading all of my cats to like their their biggest form, and then just like finally beat that game. But it it did take a while. It took like a grind, but it felt so awesome to be like, "You tried to sell me stuff. You but stuck I it to the it. man. I don't, That's what yeah. you did." I feel like that is that is sick. Like <laughs> it is. Problem. it's a sickness. Cuz here's sickness, the thing. Yes. Uh, games like that, you said several key words there. Like took a long time and when I finally did. And yes in the end you were like I beat it, but to get to that conclusion countless hours were spent playing something that did not deserve your time playing it. Yeah. Like, oh, but it's so fun. No, but that game was really fun. That's the thing. Is like a really simple game that's covered in microtransactions that you can just kind of like space out and play is completely different from a game where like you're sitting at a console with your TV just like playing forever. Like that game was on my phone. I could play it anytime I was bored. Okay, so it, you get around the grinding aspect of it by the fact you're only playing it in short bursts to begin with. I'm Whereas playing console it in bursts. games and yeah. yeah console games encourage you to play for hours at a time phone games it's minutes at a time yeah. but even then the, the 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 same sentiment is there that these games are like oh no oh, yeah. you can earn it by doing this like fuck you i shouldn't have to spend twelve thousand yeah. hours to earn your stupid thing that's insane 
Like, that's not even remotely cool that you would do that. And that's why, I, that's the insulting thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it, that, that pisses me off. But yeah. I guess I'm no longer hardcore. <laughs> well, no, it's because you are hardcore. Like, this is a casual as fuck. Really. Jesse, you're so hardcore. You're the hardcoreist. <clears throat> Hold on, yeah. let me sip my, let me sip my tea yeah. now. <laughs> People play games differently, and that's what I've realized. You know, like my, my buddies who do such microtransaction thing. games, they play games in bursts, short bursts, and, you know, and they usually do it together or, you know, they talk about it and, and then they, they just stop. Like, I, I, I'm, I like to play games very focused, you know, and it, it, microtransactions feels like it cheapens that experience for me. Mm. Are there, uh, is that it? Are we done with, with hitting so. microtransactions? Yeah, it's probably a good time to go to the break. After the break, we can talk about releases and all a bunch of all other stuff. That sounds like a good idea. Woohoo! Yep. Yeah. Let's go to a break. When we come back, we will be looking at the releases that you can waste money on and probably also have microtransactions. You're watching the Co-Optional Podcast. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Co-Optional Podcast. The final hour begins. Hello! Hmm. So the great sound of Lotus Turbo Challenge... That was a racing game that didn't have microtransactions in it. That was nice. And it was also a game where you didn't have to pay for a Lotus. In fact, the your... entire fucking game was nothing but Lotus. I saw your tweet. I was like, and now here's a song from a better racing game. Mm. Which, <laughs> of like, course, isn't true. Sing! And it's like, no, it's not that Forza is a bad racing game. It isn't. It's just I'm getting rather sick of paying for things that I shouldn't have to pay for. Well... It's understandable. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Like, I think I'm being a reasonable human being here when I say that I don't like that. Yeah, I don't it's see fair. It. I think it is fair. I really do. Definitely think so. Where are you waving at just then, <laughs> Jesse? No one. <laughs> None of your business. <laughs> I, just saw, I just see Jesse sitting like this and then go... <laughs> um, none of your business. It's an onions, and it, that's my cat. How about that shit? It was a cat that I own. You own oh. a cat? No, he is a cat. We oh. discussed oh. this in Belgium. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, we. Ha I had a deep... Here's the difference between dr American drunk and Belgium drunk. American <laughs> drunk, you're like, woo, woo. Belgium drunk, you have, you have revelations about yourself. And one of them was... <laughs> Dodger was talking about cats, and I was like, I hate cats so much. And she said, I like them because they uh, you they cultivate make... a relationship with them. They don't they don't immediately like you or give you attention. You have to you... earn your love. That's what she said. You have to you earn, earn it, their yeah. love. Okay. And I said, and I said, that's why I like dogs because dogs love you no matter what. I was like, cats are assholes. I hate cats. And I was like, if any, it's, it's like if anything, you know, I can relate to them maybe because they have to earn your love. And I was like. Holy shit, the reason why I hate cats, I'm a cat. <laughs> That's why we don't get along. I'm a cat. It blew my mind. That's Belgium drunk. <laughs> That's, That's all the story is. I was like, holy shit. And it blew my mind at the time. <laughs> and I was like, I am the cat. Wow. That's why, That's why I don't, That's why I don't this, like cats. You, you guys should realize... This is a very short summary of how long that conversation a long went conversation, on. Between yes. like a decent number of people all discussing like cat people versus dog people and whether like dog people are actually cats themselves, have cat personalities, and people that love cats are actually dogs. And, like just like this huge it, it good. Yes, it was it's yeah. A good conversation. It I don't know if good's the word I would use. It was it was a conversation that we had. <laughs> One of many. It was it was impressive. So yeah, that's a thing. So don't matter who I was waving to. Continue on with video game releases. I can't wait for this because at the end of this release list for US, there is a game I greatly wish to talk about. Dodger, it's all yours. Take it away. I'm what's, on it. What's coming? Okay. It's coming. Today, that game that I can't pronounce the name. Of, East. 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 Memories of Celseta for Vita and PlayStation Network Vita. Vita ha having Brave games. Huh? Vita having games. Oh, more Rare. Vita games. Yeah. Heck yeah. Saint Seiya Brave Soldiers comes out on PlayStation 3 Network. Saint Seiya's been around for so long, hasn't it? A uh, long time, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't even know what it is. Like, I, I, I think it was some anime thing. What? I mean, does anyone know anything about that? I've never played a Saint Seiya game. Have you watched a Saint I've Seiya show? I've never heard of it until no. now. Time what? to Google. Just Jesse, actually. I've never heard of really? Saint Seiya ever. All right. Never. What? Saint no. Seiya. Let's. Oh Jesus! Never been this on my is. Radar. Let's let you do it. Saint Seiya was uh, the manga was first released in nineteen nine no nineteen eighty six, like yes. as in oh it's God, almost older characters. than me. Wow! I was gonna say what? That's I wasn't even born. <laughs> yeah, the television show started its run in October eleventh, nineteen eighty six. So it is that what? fucking old. What? Oh my god, is this one with the, with the armored lions? I've seen that armored lion guy. He's so happy. Oh, gross. Now I gotta send you this image. Gross. Okay. Enjoy. Oh god. Scrolling down. I clicking. don't. Do I wanna be really. Do I wanna look at this? He looks oh. so happy. <laughs> that, that is the happiest lion. I'll give you credit for that. that you were not lion. kidding when he said that was a happy lion. Holy shit. Also, there's a lot of, apparently, over the years, if you keep scrolling down this Google Images, uh, they've had a lot of time to do uh, a lot of homoerotic hentai, oh, so... Oh, dear, no. Well, I'm sure. As you can That's see, thing. very happy lion. Thankfully, which um, is not homoerotic hentai, but hey. Could be. Yes, so Maybe. there is a new game regarding this. There's a this. new Saint Seiya game. Yes, It might I... be homoerotic. It might be hentai. We don't know. This is kind of to the level where there's no way in a million years I could possibly even consider trying to get into the series if it's had that much stuff behind it. No yeah. way. That's kind of crazy. Well, but <laughs> apparently Saint Seiya um, is still around, so there you go. Yeah. Also coming out today, a game that I think we might all be familiar with is Indeed. Tiny Brains. Tiny Brains. Yes, yep. hey. mm. Tiny Brains is a really fun game. It's come for PlayStation 4. It is it is more designed around four-player co-op, which means you will pay yeah. literally thousands of dollars for PlayStation 4 controllers at this stage in order <laughs> to actually participate in that. Pretty sure PS3 controllers do not work with the PlayStation 4. Would that be right? I don't think they do. Control. No, they don't. And yeah. I didn't get a chance to check, test Xbox controllers uh, with or Xbox 360 ones with Xbox One. So we'll see if that works. But yeah, the no, oh. PlayStation don't. Yeah, the PlayStation Move controller does. The actual oh. DualShock 3 does not. Mm, right. So that, yeah. <laughs> so it's unfortunate that you're releasing a four-player co-op game right now when the controllers are at their most expensive. Yeah, and no that third really party sucks. Ones. That's really unfortunate. That's going to hit that them pretty fun. hard, I think. Yes, like it is. 64 bucks really? with tax for a controller. I saw oh, it the other day and was like, that is... I don't need a friend that bad. You've, <laughs> you've really, you've really got to have friends that also have PS4s to even justify playing Tiny Brains yeah. right now on PS4 because otherwise it's just so expensive to get enough controllers for it. Yeah. So that's ouch. But it's a good game. It's actually a lot of fun. I have a video on my website that should demonstrate that. Yeah, man. Once once controllers are manageable, you hmm. should play that game. Uh, next up today is Hyperdimension Neptunia Victory. Oh, that's thing. Free network. I looked it up okay. just now. Uh huh. And the first image I see is a woman welcoming me to her boobs. So. Sounds about right. So so you're in. Fifth, is what you're saying. The fifth image is oh the fifth image is my perfect anime. Every time I talk about anime, I always talk about three types of women: small boob, medium boob, big boob. Right. Fifth image on this thing, we got. One small boob, three big boob, one medium boob. Boom. The entire oh. anime woman catalog in one game, guys. So if you're, you're into just that. just a horrible person. <laughs> I can't. Look, talk to the Japanese, not me. I didn't oh. make it that way. That ca <laughs> the stupid character it. design is what puts me off a lot of those games. I got to be honest. You know, it's like you have the right to make that fine. Do whatever. But yeah. I can't be. I just can't play it without feeling bad about myself. Here's the problem yeah. with this one, uh, like much, much in the cutesy anime, they tried to sexualize cute, they and so their faces yeah. from the neck above look like they're 12, and then the rest of them look like they're 26, and Fucking it's like, hate that. this is not cool. <laughs> no, it really isn't. Yeah. It's annoying, so it ruins cool. quite a few, like, pretty good games, so I just, like, I can't stand the aesthetic. Yeah. Um, let's move on. Yep. Next yes. game is called Painkiller Hell and Damnation. Yep, Painkiller HD. Three Network. 
It's been out on PC for quite some time. It's not That's... a bad remake of the original Painkiller. It is missing some of the levels from the original Painkiller. But if you never played the original Painkiller, this is definitely not a bad way to play it. Because it's actually pretty good for what it is. It's an hmm. arcade very much a, a single-player arena shooter. Where you'll go into an arena, a bunch of fucking skeletons come at you. Shoot them with no. shurikens and lightning and stakes. And all sorts of other good shit. While metal plays in the background. That's what that game is. Sunglasses. Yeah. That's what it is. You wear a leather jacket. That's what I imagine. You're a heaven's hit, man. <laughs> you kill shit. It's Beautiful. Good. On November 29th. We will get uh, Flow. I'm assuming it's the Flow yes. HD for mm -hmm. PS4 and all that. They already yeah. have the flower Good. on there. Yes. Um, Escape Plan for PS4. Interesting that Escape <gasps> Plan would make its way onto PS4. Question: yes, Does this Jesse? mean we're? Uh, question: Does this mean we're gonna get uh, to play Journey on PS4 and a uh, oh. super remake of they're, Journey? They're talking about that being a possibility because already because be awesome. Flow and Flower are that game company as well, and they have kind of made their way over there they are considering like a special edition of journey that would be so great like speaking of games where you don't need a million hours of gameplay to feel like you got a lot out of a game Fuck yes journey is <laughs> absolutely good. so good yeah the, yeah, Esca uh, Escape Plan, though, as you mentioned, it, it was one of the earlier PlayStation Vita titles, and it was also one of the better ones. Like, it was one of the best sellers on PlayStation Network. It's pretty good. Like, its art style is quite nice, and it's nice that it's getting a release on a platform that some people actually own. I yeah, don't they're just know porting it, right? It's not like, increased graphics, craziness. Well, I, well I'd hope they increase some of it, because the resolution on the Vita isn't that high. It would look pretty yeah, bad if they just straight ported it. Yeah. It's bad. It's gross and bad. Yes? Yes, Jesse. We have a conflict, guys. Uh, Tiny Brains is also releasing December 3rd. <laughs> what the? What I feel like December 3rd release? is correct. I have a feel. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I have a feeling there was something wrong with this release list. I don't think Tiny Brains is coming out today, or I wouldn't know about it. I'm pretty sure it's December 3rd. Yeah. Yeah, that's Tiny Brains true. launching December 3rd for PS4. Huh, okay. Delay. Oh, there was a delay on it. That might be Ah, right. all right. Yeah, that 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 release that makes sense then. Okay. Yeah, um, there was a mistake. Yeah, so in the list. scratch that. It's not out today. It's coming out December third. Yeah. Along with a game called Rainbow Moon. Fuck for yes, Rainbow Peter. Moon. This is actually like great. Yep. Wait, what? No. Of all the things I never thought I'd hear you say. Fuck yes, Rainbow fuck yes, Moon. Rainbow Moon <laughs> is among them. Fuck yes, Candy Sparkle Galaxy. <laughs> Do this shit. Now, Rainbow Moon's actually really good, and it's strange that we were talking about, like, tactical battle RPGs, because Rainbow Moon is one, and it's pretty good. Really? really? It, I've never seen it. Yeah, it originally came out for PlayStation 3. Rainbow. It was last year. Uh, uh, okay, so a newer Moon. series. Yep, and put, they're putting it on Vita now, which is great. But unfortunately, it's another game that had microtransaction issues because it got quite grindy and they decided to put pay to skip in that as well. So I'm hoping that the Vita version, they dialed that back. This looks like Clash of Clans. What? I, that, that's a weird comparison. Like, just from screenshots, it looks like Clash of Clans. Let's let's see if we can bring up some footage visually, of it. Okay, good. Because I'm looking at the screenshots now too. I almost agree with you. It visually looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I never I played the like, game, so I don't know. But I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of Clash of Clans. <laughs> so <laughs> Clash of Clans was kind of hilarious because, and I'm pretty sure it's okay to say this, and we bloody well should because of like full exposure, uh, full disclosure. But a few of us got offered to play that like as a promo thing. And I think a couple of us did, and most of us seem oh, to come yeah. to the conclusion that we did not like Clash of Clans. Well, like, nobody, more than nobody that, likes it. Yeah, more than that, it was also just, this is not the sort of game that anybody wants to watch a video of gameplay of, yeah. right? It's a game where you poke a couple buttons, and then you walk away for a few hours, and then you come back and poke a couple buttons. I was like, Ugh. Not not good for just like sitting and playing at all. It was it was a valuable learning experience. It was. Well, Mighty <laughs> Quest for Epic Loot is basically Clash of Clans, just a fuckload better. So I mean, you could just try playing that. It's got a lot better since as well. It, I've heard that game is actually pretty great. It is. It's getting better. Like I've, pl I've played it a little bit, but it's like apparently getting yeah. better. Yeah. It was really bad at one point with their microtransactions because you could basically just buy your way to power. They fixed mm -hmm. a lot of that. And it's actually a pretty fun game. So I would recommend it. This is Rainbow Moon, by the way. 
which it's just like the graphic style is kind of classic maybe early ps2 late ps1 sort of it looks like it's sprite-esque but it's not kind of style to the to the actual aesthetic of it it also has tiny bees a tiny, tiny bee. Bees. Tiny bees. Tiny bee is apparently an enemy. But yeah, you can see like the way the movement works in the combat is very, uh, yeah. very much tactical battle esque, but on a very much a smaller, quicker scale. But those enemies are called tiny bees, and there's nothing tiny about those bees. That's a lie. That is one of those lying things. Maybe in that world, those are, those are the tiniest bees. bees they have. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's a that's a thought. That's a world I would not want to live in. Those are not tiny bees at all. But no, it is actually really good. And it's good that it's coming to Vita as well, because that's I think it's a really good platform for that kind of stuff. Just as it was on the PSP. PSP some of the best kind of these games for years. You know, it it dominated that space. It still does in Japan. Right. So yeah, that's Rainbow Moon. And uh, I think that's something you might want to pay attention to if you're a Vita owner. Me, I am. I am, yes. I, I, <laughs> I haven't picked up my Vita for a while, but let us continue with the list. We'll skip the uh, Android next. game. Oh, okay. If we must. Yes. Uh, December 6th, Gran Turismo 6 uh -huh. on PlayStation 3. Yep. Which apparently is also loaded full of microtransactions for cars. So yeah, the that's what I've are. heard too. Yeah. I was, I was going to just try to try to just skip on through. <laughs> it's also really weird to see Gran Turismo 6 coming out for PlayStation 3. It's like, what a great game yeah. that would have been to, you know, release just after launch. So there's actually you know, a game worth playing on the PS4. Yeah. I don't even know, man. But that, I mean, that happens on every generation. Like, there's something they've just been developing for years. Like, well, we can't just port it over now. Uh. <laughs> I mean, may maybe. Um, and then last up is December yeah. 10th. Sorcery Saga, Curse of the Great Curry God. Yes, Vita, yes. PlayStation Network Vita. There are many things I would like to talk about with this. One, I that... don't... What? <laughs> Okay. What, TV? What? One, this that's is, the greatest title of any do? game ever made. Sorcery Saga, Curse of the Great Curry God. Or someone from They're the UK. Gods. Yeah, the Curry God. Secondly, it's by Axis Games. They are the same people that made this thing. Muramasa Rebirth. Muramasa. Yes. Gotcha. Axis, they made that. And they also made uh, Odin Sphere and a bunch of other stuff. So they make good games. But the greatest thing by far for this for the, the limited edition. edition. The spicy... I'm looking at it right now. The hot and spicy, everything nicey limited edition. Includes a fully usable plate, spoon, and bib. Featuring the hug huggable what? characters from the series. Huh? Wow. Yes. yes. I'm so sorry. You get, it looks like you would feed a baby with this stuff. Yes. It is insane. There's a very, very, very said, small image of it. I'm not sure I can really show it to you, but I will try. Ah, oh, yes, I can. Steam. Okay. Here we go. This game is entirely too cute. There we go. There is a, a plastic plate in the shape of a rabbit, a bib, and a small oh my spoon. Goodness, what is this? I don't even. Oh. I love the way that the entire point of the RPG is Papuru's quest to find ingredients to make the legendary curry. Yep. And what the hell is it with Axis Games always having a cooking element in it? Muramasa has one as well. Uh, you get ingredients just to make I ramen love and it. stuff. And it, it's a similar in their other kind of games. So apparently, it is a it is a roguelike style dungeon crawler by Axis, and it has a very serious cooking element to it. I am extremely curious about the gameplay. Maybe Not even too. remotely curious. Not it's very <laughs> curious. Too damn, it's too damn cute for its own good. I but apparently, it's pretty hardcore. It's got like if you die in a dungeon, the items you possess and all the levels you accrue throughout the game disappear. <gasps> it's, oh, you can't even you wow. can't even loot your body. Apparently They're just gone pretty forever. Hardcore. Extremely nope, cute, extremely even. hardcore game. What a weird mix. Yeah. <laughs> That's how cute games should be. Cute games should be the hardest games. Behold the power of yeah. curry, so says the feature list. Need a quick boost to help you conquer even the most challenging of dungeons? If you have the recipes and ingredients, you can make a delicious stat boosting curry in any dungeon. Perfect. Yes. And it's for Vita, so we have more games to play. Vita is rapidly becoming the really weird Japanese RPG machine again. Yeah. And I'm actually That's entirely fun. okay with that. I mean, That's it started totally with fun. Persona, right? And everybody was like, I'm going to buy a Vita for, for Persona. Persona. <laughs> and now it's like, oh, there's all these other games that you might actually like. Yeah. 
I will yep, buy yep. this Sorcery Saga game. You... <laughs> I want... Look, I've never wanted you to buy something more in my life. I just never... I don't know... I The more I look into this, the less I even know what the hell's happening. I just don't... Apparently this game has drug references in it. Let us let us watch the little trailer. I have it right here. 18 plus. Yeah. Does it? I'm not sure how it has drug references in it, but apparently it does. Curry is my drug. I mean, I'll, I'll give him that. Curry is delicious. Curry is the man's drug. Jesus Christ, this is chibi as fuck. Oh God, I can't. I gotta admit, I do, I do have, I do have some problems with that art style as well. So it's like I cannot this. deal with it. Oh my God! Even the even the evil one's cute. God, shut up. Shut. Uh, this is what it, this is like the major problem I have with Japanese games. Like the gameplay looks fantastic, and then the character thing is just like I can't. <laughs> if I was a twelve-year-old girl, I'd have stickers of these people on my I'm locker. Fucking twenty-nine yeah, years precious. old, I can't. <laughs> Woo, Curry! I can't. I can't. I mean, I don't. That little rabbit thing that looks like it wants to murder you. I'm okay with that. I can deal with that. Oh, th there's the pre-order for the limited curry edition. Yeah. Oh my there god. There it is. That's just ridiculous. Hot and spicy. Everything nicey. All credit to them, actually. Like Axis always do some really good additions because they don't actually make you pay extra for them. It's just like, oh, you were kind of one of the first people to buy it, like in the first wave, you get all this shit. Like the cover that I got for my PlayStation Vita with Muramasa and the soundtrack yeah, yeah. and they gave me a case and all that stuff. They didn't, you don't pay any extra for it. They just give it to you. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Right, it was good. a bonus. Yeah. Feel yeah. exclusive. The yeah. first wave of, of buyers. Also, can we can we just celebrate the fact, by the way, that not only Persona Five has been announced, but also three other fucking games also all coming out yeah. next year. Damn the right. Dance game. <laughs> that is something I will not be purchasing. That's wait, what? A dance game? There's a da there's a Persona dance game coming out. It's really oh Jesus. Look, I like, they gave us I, a fighting I, game. The we fighting game was great. Game now. I know. They're doing another one too. Like to... There's a sequel. Like... It's got a stupid name. Yes, I like to point out something that is amazing. The uh, limited edition copy with the bib, plastic spoon, and plate is only being sold in the United States. <laughs> right now, the game is only being sold in the United States. I assume it's probably a Japanese version, but there's no EU release oh, yeah. for that yet. No, 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 no. That special combination oh. is only sold. Everywhere else, they get something probably entirely different, but they're like, Americans could use a bib That's and amazing. a plate. In Japan, it's probably a boob mouse mat, most likely. Oh. Probably so. Yeah. Persona 4, the Ultimax Ultra Suplex Hold Edition. That's the follow-up to Persona 4, uh, Persona 4 Arena, the fighting game, which was really, really good. But yeah, Persona 5, obviously the biggest announcement. And there's like something like Persona Q or something like that, which I think might be a 3DS game. Yeah, Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth for 3DS. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. Which is pretty cool because like, hey, look, there's a proper Persona game coming. But it, it is... It uses the... Actually, all the characters I see in there are from Persona 3. Interesting. Oh, they're not all from Persona... Yeah. What does the Q stand for? I have no idea. Okay. Quest! Persona Quest. Persona yeah. Quest. Probably something like that. Persona... But... Quasi. Persona... Quest question? Question. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I kind of like... Oh, it's got Persona 4 characters in it as well. I mean, I, I don't know. It's not, like, sickeningly chibi and cute. It's it's acceptable. I, I could probably play that without hating myself. I'm just glad there's more Persona stuff coming out because I, I don't know, even know why. I just... I was really compelled by Persona. I thought it was fantastic. Persona mm -hmm. 4 was just such a good game. Yeah, I was... Do the fifth one. <laughs> With just like five chairs with, with ball and chains all attached oh, yeah, to them, I'm like, what does this mean? They didn't reveal a thing. Not a thing. I was like, okay. They were like, I think we've made our themes pretty obvious, but, uh, and I was like, I mean, uh, <laughs> not, in not entirely. Indeed. This persona dancing thing is, this is not okay. Beautiful? <laughs> no. What system is it for? It's, what is it? It's Persona 4 Dancing All Night. 
What? <laughs> yeah, this is not okay. The reason this is not okay as well is that front and center they've got that fucking the idol character Risei who is pretty much under age and that's creepy as fuck. So I'm not okay with that at all. I'm going to avoid that. Uh, I don't know, but I, whatever the case, like I'm going to be avoiding. Way to ruin it, Dodger. I'm going to be avoiding that shit like the plague. I can guarantee that. It's like why? Why can't you just be not perverted and horrible? Why? Are you are you asking Japan then? <laughs> yeah, just in general. <laughs> the answer. It's Japan. like Japan. Surprise. Quit Question. your fucking shit, please. Oh God, it's by the. So it's, it's by the Project babies. Diva developers. Okay, that explains exactly why it's creepy and weird. Ugh. That's the rest of the reason why I want to go to Japan. Because they are so silly. I love Japan. I love you. I want to give you a big, big well, hug. three out of four ain't bad, right? There's three games that we as grown-ups could play without feeling horrible about ourselves. Gross, yeah. And a four out of four for Jesse. Nope. <laughs> four out of four. I just four out of four. genuinely just like it. Whatever. Not a hell, big Japan. anime guy, especially cute anime. Gross. I'm not either, but Persona is just awesome and a really great game. Um, should we go through the EU releases? We can. I the. Or I think, do you want to move on? I think it's the only all, real yes. changes are mostly like it's mostly PlayStation Four it's stuff. Most, yeah, it's all pretty much the same stuff and like releases of things that. Like Injustice God Among Us Ultimate Edition and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So you know. And it's... Putty Squad. Putty Squad. Ow! So Putty the squad! a follow up to the Putty Squad controversy last week. It turns out we might have actually been onto something. Oh shit. We were joking. Wait, go but on. But it's entirely possible that that's not the case. There were. All right, I've got to try and find this article. Do we need? Do we need like a last time on the podcast? Right, well, we while I'm trying to find it, why don't you explain it for Smooth's benefit, who has no idea what we're talking about. Smooth, last time on the podcast, <laughs> we discovered a game coming out for European PlayStation 4 that is called Putty Squad. And we were like, what the shit is this game? We looked it up, and it looks like a game that would have been on SNES or Genesis. It doesn't even look like it's from this generation of games. Then we started looking up reviews, and all the reviews were like, this is one of the best games ever created. Changed my life, based on and the cra classic game. And we're like, based on the classic game? So we went, we looked that up, and apparently it's a game that's like super old, that's like Amiga level of old, and everyone wow. then was like, this is one of the best games ever made. And so we thought it was a conspiracy, because it makes no sense because that a game that looks this silly. literally none of us had ever heard of this game before. I've never heard and, of it. Right? Yeah, it went like, further. Oh. It went further in the sense that even though it was said to be one of the greatest Amiga games ever, it actually never came out on Amiga. All of the reviews were done of the demo right. version. It was right, never right. released on Amiga. This is getting a little sillier. Apparently, a uh, man uh, by the name of Mark Kale of System 3, who is responsible for this, made the claim in Retro Gamer Magazine in episode 121, yes. that they would yes. actually, as part of the collector's edition, be releasing the Amiga version on 3.5-inch floppy disk. And apparently this huh? is one gigantic fucking lie. How far down the rabbit hole does this go? Oh what? my god, wait, what? Yeah. How... I don't even know what to say <laughs> to that. Is this, this, game so even, is this even a real game? Is this an elaborate ruse? What is Sounds this? Like... I called it last universe. week. This is some Illuminati shit right here. This is full-on government mind control. They're coming for you, Europe. This is when it happens. This is when it happens. You're going to be like, next week, we'll have so many people in chat that will be like, dude, Putty Squad is yeah. really good. Apparently, we should all try it. Best. This guy was Change lying through life. his teeth. Oh, yeah. Because eventually he retracted it and saying, like, more importantly, to try and find a reliable disc manufacturer that can master it, produce it, and produce it in quantity to meet the demand is, like, going to be very, very difficult to do. And, like, no. Is no, it's there a lot of demand for Putty Squad? On <laughs> on, on 3.5-inch floppy disk for Amiga? Probably not so much. There's, and there's... only releasing in the UK, right? Or just in Europe in general? Yeah, the entire article is really, really crazy. 
because there is so much here down this particular rabbit hole. The article in question, if you want to look for it, is on a site called Code Tapper, which is an Amiga retro site. And, like, they go through point by point, basically debunking all... <coughs> <coughs> a lot of this shit. Kill, my apologies. Killing TV off. Yeah. Oh my god. I was I was killed oh by the sarin god. gas in the room right now from System Three. <laughs> no. I I posted it in the chat there, but if you go into Code Tapper, you should be able to find it. It is just silly. Like I don't I don't even know what is going on with this anymore. But there's some weird shit happening with this game. Oh shit! Well, we know how it's gonna be popular now. They. The trailer for Putty Squad is voiced by Brian, Brian Blessed. Blessed, yeah. Honorary Yogscast but member, which means <laughs> now Simon will get behind it, which oh, means no. <laughs> it will be the most successful game of the year. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. It is the Illuminati. Oh, my God. <laughs> it all starts all, at Yogscast. They're releasing video games now <laughs> in I'm the not. open. It's, it's, I'm, I, I literally just went to, like, it, within the last week, Google searched, and all the things are like, Brian Blessed lets his voice this amazing trailer. I'm like, this, this is, is not an amazing... What is happening? There's a huge... This is a ridiculous amount of hype behind this thing, and nobody knows anything about whatsoever. It's just a fucking platformer. I don't get it. So I've never been so amused I'm my just entire life. I'm just life. horribly confused. Oh, it's, it's really beautiful. weird. And we're all going to play it. It, it just looks like they took the Donkey Kong junk, like, uh, jungle uh, engine and just... Uh. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just do not know. You know we're all going to play it because of this, because of how weird all this is. It's just so... We're going to play it. I can't. I can't play it. No, I... There's some, there's some really horrible stuff going on. I can't. It, I can't support that. Oh, my God. TV, please... <laughs> Please do a WTF is, but have it just like devolve into like weird madness. <laughs> like I want that so badly. Just put on I don't think it's on PC. Should I see if I can try and find the demo for the Amiga version and do it on that? Because that might be yes. doable. I can emulate yeah. that. I yeah. don't yeah. understand. All right. Well, sorry, Code Tapper. By the way, we just nuked their site completely. <laughs> I know. I the second that you posted it in chat, I clicked it and it was already it's like broken. <laughs> it's yeah. like, well, okay. I don't know. All right, Here's well, the crazy thing. Oh, my God. So I just watched the trailer. 90% of the trailer is him reading reviews of websites that have reviewed the game and giving it scores like 94%. But they're all Amiga. <laughs> but let me guess. They're all Amiga sites whether the game was never released on. I can't. I can't even. <laughs> this is really weird. This is some. This this is oh yeah, weird. this is really yeah. strange. Like th this is like a gigantic hoax. Like this is some huge joke that's being played. Big all elaborate, of us. like put together and then like pushed out to to make seem organic and real. But fucking even Brian Blessed's in on it. I mean, God, who can we trust? Oh, we can't trust anyone. We can't trust anybody. Not even each other. No, especially not each other. Especially. Oh, I mean, we oh, already didn't trust guys. each other. <laughs> If they come to me and say it's the best game ever, we'll pay you to say that. I'll be like, guys, I hear it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh my god, it's horrifying. This thing I don't just understand. I just do not. I do not get it at all. God. All right, well, this is probably a good time to round the show off, I think. <laughs> I, I just, I don't want to go into this any further. I'm fearing for my life at this point. On such a note. Indeed. Creep everyone out. Yep. So before we do that, it's a great opportunity. Oh, yeah. Great opportunity to find out what exactly Smooth McGroove is going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. So tell us. Spill the beans. What do you do? What are you doing? Well, right now, uh, I'm recording a new song. And uh, I think what it's going it? to be a good one. It's What's from, the song? Uh, I, can't, I can't tell that, but it's going Why? to be uh, from Why? the original Game Boy. Ah. Uh, Tetris. Man. It's I'm Tetris, excited. guys. It's Tetris. Song B. Tetris Song B. Calling it now. You know. Oh! Oh, shit, son! Oh! No, no, no. I'm not going to oh, say it's Tetris Song shit. B. Oh. <laughs> but I, I, I've already arranged uh, Song B and Song C. I have them arranged. Ah. So, really? Yeah. Cool. I don't know when I'm, I'm going to actually record them because it's, Game it's, Boy it's songs and so the way that I do them are so weird because they're just like three melodic tracks and a percussion track. Yeah. They're so simple. So. 
I, I have so much like room to do things and it's fun, but it's kind of scary because it's like, oh, what? how does this sound? And I spend like, you, get you know. You to be creative. Yeah, I get to be creative, but it's just like sometimes it's like, oh, that didn't sound good at all. Okay, well, crap, I got to redo that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, I'm always scared that people are going to be like, oh, that doesn't sound like the original Game Boy track. But, um, yeah, they, they just require a lot of work. But it, it is going to be a Game Boy song. So, it's I'm excited. Like I get my throat hurts, but you know what I was going for. This is why I don't let you do this, because it's bad. Stop. That's why he does it. I don't have to. You're horribly out of tune. You don't even you don't even know what you're doing. Look, I don't. That's the point. That's that's what my channel has been for for three years. <laughs> horribly out of tune. The Jesse and not Cox knowing story. what I'm doing. <laughs> hey man, as long as you're being real about it, that's that's what counts, right? Are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm the realest there is. Yep. But besides recording, uh, I've been playing a lot of I've been streaming a lot of games, actually, yeah. on my... I have a Twitch channel. It's just Smooth McGroove. And that's been fun. Kind of a, a way to kind of relax after days of recording. Get on and play some games. So, uh, yeah. If you haven't been to my Twitch channel, it's kind of fun. It's really laid back. I don't do anything serious. It's usually just, like, viewer runs, hanging out, talking, a lot of ranting. So, yeah, for better or for worse, a lot of ranting. I was an idiot. Yeah. I did this. Like, I put a push pin in this kind of blue tack stuff. I must have done it a couple of weeks ago. So I fucking grabbed the blue tack, having completely forgotten that was there. Ooh. Now I feel like a moron. I did something like that a few months ago. I was picking up a ball of cat hair off the ground, and there was a glass shard in it, and it stabbed through my thumb. And it was the most painful thing I've experienced in years. I was like, why? Why did That's they why even you don't put this in animals. here? This is dumb. This is an idiotic thing to do. Now, see, you did that, so I. Yeah, this I, is I my fault. I was gonna fault. say that's not an animal thing. That's a that's humans uh, as animals. Guys, yeah, TV's yes. an animal. He's an animal. We are all mm. animals. Yeah, so don't don't do that. And remember, there's a she wolf in the closet, in all of us. I don't know what the shit that means. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Dodger. So, <laughs> Dodger, what are you doing this week? I, th I thought you wanted me to shut up. Well, first off, everybody should go listen to the Shakira song, She-Wolf. Um, no. And then, no. uh, before I forget, our wonderful mod, Amarili Yu, had a baby girl. So ah, congratulations. Hey. Your life is now officially ruined. Well Fantastic. Offspring. Uh, but yes, okay, for me, I have two channels, Press Hard to Continue and Dexterity Bonus. Dexterity Bonus I do vlogs on, and Press Hard to Continue I do gameplay and then a weekly news show. There wasn't one last Saturday because we were in Belgium, but, uh, and there probably won't be one this Saturday because I will be eating all the food with my family, but after that we'll get back on schedule. Mm -hmm. And uh, on all of the social media things, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, all of those, I am Dex Bonus, D-E-X-B-O-N-U-S. So come follow me and hang out and... Hopefully I won't be too obnoxious, but I'm not promising anything. So, there it is. Ta-da. Jesse, what are you doing? Uh, this week, continuing with videos. Like always, uh, go watch the end and then get enraged or mind blown by the burial at sea ending, which is just, what? And then um, go and uh, uh, realize that I will not be spending Thanksgiving with my family. And instead, we're making videos because that's what people who really care about you make, right, Dodger? <laughs> right. So that's what that's what I'll be doing. That's and why I'll be here for Christmas. So I will not. Baby Jesus is far more important than you. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, normal videos and stuff. And then if you want to follow me on Jesse Cox on the Twitter or the Jesse Cox on the Facebook, you can do that. And that would be swell. But all those things are at the end of all my videos anyway, so you don't need me to tell you. If you watch my stuff, you mm. watch it. If you don't, beep. That's what I have to say. Uh. Yeah. All right, a few things. I have extended the t-shirt sale until December the 2nd because people are like, I get paid on December the 1st, and I'm not going to be able to buy it. So I'm like, I will fix that for you. Nice. It's not really <laughs> like I fixed it. I did fix it, like straight up. So rodeoarcade.com, you can find my latest t-shirt. They have $25. It's pretty good. It's a good t-shirt. The FOV, the FOV shirt? Yes, it's the FOV shirt. The Longhorn Snark <laughs> House so shirt. It's so good. It's so good. It's a great looking shirt. Yes. 
Indeed. So you, guys know. you should have a look at that. It's uh, actually people were wearing it at Red Bull this weekend. It's a good looking shirt. Those things last I forever. Like that, I like that we. The two of us will never let FOV die. No, you won't. <laughs> Obviously, that joke has been beaten down. Yeah, I might as well make some fucking money out of it if you're going to keep doing that. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, man. Assholes. FOV sliders. That will go forever. Uh, yep, yeah, so there's that. I, I actually, we have just kind of, we're working on a new shirt right now. I'm willing to give you a preview of it. I believe I've shown you guys. Yes. Yep. I, yes. I have to scroll up and try and find this. So this is a, a preview of a forthcoming shirt that we might be releasing in January. I'm just oh. going to try and find it for you. All right. Okay. Let, let's see if I can make this work. So I'm going to have to just like save these images. So just give me a moment. I'm th hoping this will be one that people actually really like. I like it. <laughs> I think I think it's You're really so cool. So clever. It's pretty good. I'm sorry. I'm just adding media files in here. Ugh, it's taking fucking forever. But yes, there will be a new shirt. I'll show you it in a minute. But in the meantime, I can also mention that I am working on a video for Assassin's Creed 4, as people have asked. I am doing a content patch as soon as I finish this. That should be out tomorrow, assuming nothing goes wrong. It will be about microtransactions, as well as the Steam box and Steam reviews, most likely. More Hearthstone is coming your way. That's going to be as bad as it usually is, I think, so... There we go. That this this is the the current concept art for the front of our new shirt. As I believe Breaking Bad fans will understand exactly what that is. And the back of it, this is just currently on the front, but it's going to be on the back is going to look something like that. So there you go. Thank you so clever. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. So uh, hopefully people like that. <laughs> oh, it's not. Hang on, it's not showing up. All right, give me a sec. I, f I forgot to put the overlay on. All right, uh, there we go. Apply changes. There we go. Cool. That's it. That's that is the front of it. That's obviously a sketch right now. It's not finished yet. But that's what we're currently looking at. <laughs> and I want to point out this is the. Yes. It's going to be the back of it. I think it should be pretty good. What, Jesse? Nothing. It's just perfect. It's just a wonderful, wonderful, clever, funny shirt. You should <laughs> buy it. Je <laughs> Jesse is just so fucking vicious about this. What did I do to you? Did I fucking Nothing, kill your dog? Giving... Nothing. I'm just giving you shit because <laughs> it's clever. It's all right. So yeah, we're we're we're, we're gonna do that. That we're probably going to release that one in January. That's uh, we're obviously not done with it, and we don't want to release a new shirt straight after this one. Want to give you guys, you know, time to not spend all your money on my shirts. So nonsense. Yeah. Spend it on spend it spend it on your family, kids. Yeah. yeah. Don't buy your brother or sister something nice. If you don't have a brother or sister, buy you something nice. Or, okay. I forgot to mention that I have two uh, shirts up for pre-order right now. Oh, really? Uh, where can we find them? I should have mentioned that. So, <laughs> you can spend that money on my shirts. Where can One we find them? Song of Storms design, which is pretty cool, and the other is an old-school Pokemon battle between me and my dark self. Where can we and find Char them? Dark Charl is our, is our pet slash Pokemon. So, yeah, go check those out on uh, Shark Robot. Shark or Robot. Or Shark Robot. Into the ninth, okay. I believe. So, yeah. They're pretty cool. One of them was designed by a fan, so I thought that was pretty fun. That's always the I'm best way. It's these. like you make a, a just an obnoxious amount of money off of uh, some fan's hard work they did for free. It's brilliant. Well, I, I, I was <laughs> I was so excited about this guy's art. I was like, dude, you know, I'm I'm gonna compensate you. And and he yeah. at first he was like, oh, it's all right, but but yeah, I'm I'm he's yeah if he's compensated. I, I feel good. If you're gonna I, I if you're a fan, by the way, let, let me just be just like his awesome art. <laughs> Let me just be totally honest to you. Do not ever, 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 ever give a design to someone you like and say, oh, I don't want any money for it. We will exploit it and make as much money out of that design as possible. It's your fucking work. You most assuredly have the right to either sell it oh. to us or demand a revenue share. Fucking do that. I can't do that. Like, <laughs> anytime somebody's been like, 
no, it's fine. It's free. I just like, like no. slip the money anyway. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, it's I not. It's not I free. Can't no, do it. like that's that has genuine value. No, do not give your stuff away for free. If you're good at something, never do it for free. A very important dead man said that. Just don't do it. Yes. The Joker <laughs> from Batman. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat's like demanding revenue share seems really dickish. What? You you did work, and it's going to be sold for. You know, it's probably going to make quite a bit of money for the person. Demanding revenue share is not remotely unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so just, I just want to point that out. Like, I, it annoys me a lot I, because I, I see, like, there's other YouTubers or, like, streamers or whatever that, like, or even, like, big organizations that should know better that it's like, say, oh, yeah, design us a shirt, and then we'll sell it, and maybe they offer a prize or something, and it's, like, some shitty backpack or whatever. Your design is worth real money. Fucking treat it that way. And honestly, I'm always worried for people that don't because either you're super generous and don't really understand how the world works, or you don't really believe in your design and in your ability. Either way, believe in your fucking talent. You know? You made, yeah. you made something that's really, really cool. You worked on that. You deserve to be compensated for it. You know? Yeah, and, and with this with this specific design on my shirt, uh, this guy actually did a design for me for free uh, back in April, mm -hmm. and um, I gave him stuff, and I was like, dude, I, I love your work. Would you want to work with me again? Yeah. And, you know, I promoted his work, and this time, you know, he's getting paid for it, so. That's actually how Zook got hired with us. Like, and obviously I pay him a monthly really? salary now, and he even nice. lives with us. He lives in our fully furnished basement suite. He and for the t-shirt designs as well, suites. we do. Oh, our basement suite's fucking awesome. We've got a sauna down there. We've got a fucking gym. Oh, my God. It's got its own fridge. It's <laughs> amazing. Our basement suite kicks ass. Anyway, the it we hired basement him on for that. Sweet. 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 That's what kills me. Yeah, man. Yeah. But even now, it, we, we pay him full time, but we he still gets a revenue share on all the shirt designs, you know, because... That, that is a level of talent that most people don't have. That's not a job that everyone can do because you need fucking creativity and then the talent to be able to put that down on paper. That's, a, that's something I can never, ever do myself. So that's worth a lot of money. Understand mm -hmm. it. Don't give your shit away for free. Don't, yeah. don't be exploited by people you like on YouTube. Don't. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, usual content is to be expected, and I would like to remind people that we have some StarCraft events coming up. No, I'm not leaving the house. I promised I wouldn't go anywhere for the rest of the year, so I'm not running off. But I am doing a tournament, and it, it goes by the name of Shoutcraft America Winter, and it is sponsored by Ting.com, which is a really awesome mobile phone provider. So if you, it's a cell phone network in the US that does a, has a different business model. So if you're sick of contracts and shit, you might want to have a look at them. They're sponsoring the tournament. It's on the 7th to the 8th of December. It's going to contain the defending champion of Shoutcraft America, that being Kane from My Insanity, and seven of the top ladder players on North America. And we're going to have a big tournament, and I'm going to co-cast with Greg Adrafields, and it's going to be great. So please do keep an eye out for that on the 7th to the 8th of December 2013. And if you missed the VODs, the video on demand from the Red Bull Battlegrounds, you can find them all, I believe, over on Red Bull Esports. So if you look for... Let me just double-check this is the right one. Yeah, Red Bull Esports is a... It's a real channel. It's on YouTube. It's called Red Bull Esports. And they have, I believe, if not all the games, most of the games. And you owe it to yourself to watch SOS versus Scarlet and Bomber versus Scarlet. Scarlet! Yeah, Scarlet's awesome. <laughs> Bomber vs. Scarlet is a phenomenal series. Those you are literally all it. the videos I saw all weekend. Like, dude, look at this! So much Oh, hype. yeah, because it's some really crazy shit happened. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but that game three is just amazing. So, nice. yeah. Do watch that. Go watch that. Go enjoy some StarCraft. I do commentate a lot of it. I commentated SOS vs. Scarlet, and that was a really good series, and a bunch of others as well. So, I think that pretty much wraps us up. Is there anything else that we are supposed to talk about, or are we about done here? I think we're done. I have to we're pee, done. so... Cool! I'm, I'm good to go now. Yeah, I'm gonna leave now, then. Follow us on Twitter, folks. Total Biscuit or Cynical Brit, if you want the less spammy version. Dex Bonus, Jesse Cox, and Smooth McGroove. Follow us on YouTube on these right below us. They've been here the entire time. How do you not notice? Please watch our videos. We need to pay rent. Please don't use ad block. We also need to pay rent. But if you do use ad block, 
I understand. Ads are annoying. Just whitelist. Whitelist us. Whitelist us and or buy t-shirts because that's okay too. Or buy t-shirts. Thank you. T-shirts yeah. are great. Yes. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks for your support. This has been the Corruptional Podcast. Good night. Have a great Thanksgiving. Goodbye. Goodbye. Unless you're not from America, in which case you don't get